Hello and welcome to the Libre Podcast, Episode 5, with my co-host, Mike, the employed Linux user. So we've got a lot of great stuff to go into today. Uh, one thing that I just wanted to uh, talk about, which is probably going to be a big duh for those of you that work with video files a lot. I mean, I work with video files a lot, but it's mostly screen recordings. And, you know, when you record, like, still images, there's all kinds of... Um, uh, like compression and stuff that goes on. Like I think basically to like explain it in very like simple terms, it pretty much just treats a still image like a still image instead of it like being multiple frames per second. Um, like, you know, multiple pictures per second. But I recorded a bunch of video this morning, technically just an hour, slightly over an hour worth of video this morning about the new chicken coop that I built from four different audio sources or four different video sources. And I'm looking at the folder right now and it's 59 gigabytes. Like, oh my gosh. Cause you can't, you can't get all those benefits of um, compression and stuff when you're recording chickens and stuff that's outside and the real world because stuff in the real world very rarely ever sits still. How big were your files uh, when you were recording that stuff when you were walking around in the woods for that. What what was that that you were doing again? Oh, yeah. I actually, so I, I just recorded um, a couple hours worth of hikes when I went to I went to Iceland last week, uh, which is honestly one of the better European countries you can go to because there's nobody fucking there, which is great because it preserves all of the actual like beautiful nature shit. Right? You don't have like fucking French people destroying the countryside. <laughs> so... And it was like 35 gigs, but mind you, I was recording it in like 1080p 60. So, so if you're recording it, you were okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, yeah, well you you have you have four different camera angles. Like yeah. that's whatever you have multiplied by four. I have one camera, uh, and mine was about 30 gigs in total uh, for a couple hours worth of a with the hike footage. Wow. Yeah. That's uh yeah. I mean, that that's... whole country is like a big wallpaper. <laughs> Well, isn't um isn't Iceland known for a uh, strongman or is that Greenland? That I think is strongman. Yeah, there's a lot of there's uh, isn't where's Thor Thor Bjornsson? Is he from Iceland or Greenland? I am. There's a couple. I, other thought, I thought they were like Norwegian though. I thought those were more like Scandinavian people. Well, I mean, yeah. I know Iceland is technically Scandinavia, but. Well, yeah, that's that's their that's their like ancestry because the Scandinavians basically have superior genetics because back in the Viking days they would just go to like England and like other countries and pillage and take all the hot bitches back with them, and so you know you do that over the centuries and and that's why you know British women look like fucking dogs and <laughs> Scandinavian women are super hot. They had all the best ones for years and years. Same thing with the men. I mean, especially when it comes to being strong, you know, what were they doing in England? Being monks and doing all kinds of stupid shit like that. The, you know, uh, yeah, he is, took the, he is Icelandic. I know he it. Is, see, I know yeah. it. And I think, uh, if you want to, if you want to search this next, isn't strongman like the top sport in Iceland? I think it is. I think strongman is. is to Iceland the same way that, uh, well, isn't isn't baseball still technically America's sport, even though it's really football? <laughs> yeah, it's like America's pastime, even though it technically yeah. still is football. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it, I mean, you're right about genetics, though. Like we we stayed in an Airbnb and we had someone come in. They like you know inspect the um the whatever the fuck it's called. I'm blanking on it. The thing on the side of your house, electric panel, the the reader on the side of your house, uh, to like. Look at it. The dude who came in, dude was fucking huge. He was like six five, like built. And I was oh. like, damn, this is how all you motherfuckers are over here, huh? Yeah, just just every single one of them. <laughs> I know they're all like tall, built, the, blonde hair. The least attractive Scandinavian person would blow the fuck out of Miss Britain in a beauty pageant yeah. contest, like a million percent. Yeah. Just absolutely blue. Um, so I can figure out how to search 
to uh, share videos, to go over these GoPro videos. Uh, you know what? I might not even have one that I want. So it's it's multiple uh, it's multiple angles. Okay. Okay, so maybe we'll do this one. This is this is inside of the coop. Okay. So it's uh, a little bit not quite the best. And then it's with you. Okay. See my chickens? I can see your chickens. Yeah, so this is on the inside of the coop. Um, actually mounted to a perch. My girlfriend and I built this perch, um, what was it, two days ago. So it's it's basically a roosting ladder because, you know, chickens have this instinct to get up high off the ground, away from predators when they sleep. That just makes them more comfortable. Right. Even though... I'm pretty sure that this coop is pretty much predator proof because it's got this uh, skirt that goes around the bottom. And um, did you build that skirt into the ground? No. So okay. it, it just comes down. It's on wheels, as you can see. So those oh. wheels, you know, keep the frame. Uh, I think they're about one foot from the bottom of the wheel to the top of the uh, caster. And those front wheels actually swivel, so it's kind of like a giant shopping cart. <laughs> the front wheels 360 swivel, the back wheels are fixed. Um, so that uh, skirt is made out of mostly 2x4 fencing. Um, I also, there's like one segment where it's 2x3 fencing just because I got the wrong size fence at Ace. And then all around that is wrapped with half inch hardware cloth so the openings of that are basically so small you can barely stick your pinky finger through it and um uh what else was i gonna say oh yeah so the, the skirt comes down vertically and then out about 20 inches so for a predator to get into this coop it would have to dig basically 20 inch like tunnel 20 inches under and then into the coop and i just don't i don't think anything's really going to do that within like 24 hours i mean granted i don't have well my neighbor walks her dogs near um near them at night like i've i've asked her to walk her dogs by the chickens so that when they do their business they leave a scent to hopefully scare away like foxes and uh Three, stuff like that two, one, so that skirt it just kind of sits on the ground yeah it sits on the ground and then it it's um, not nailed down or anything well there are some stakes okay. so there's um some gardening stakes that go around it and hold it in like um i think i put they're pretty much like every two feet. I mean, I, I don't have it measured exactly, but it's like every two feet or so that the um, the stakes are in there. So it can't easily be lifted up. Um, I mean, you, obviously a human could just pull the stakes out. And then when the coop moves, the skirt gets lifted up. Uh, so let's see if we can fast forward to where I did that. Yeah, so all sides are lifted up and then uh, start pulling it. I tell you, man, all of those, uh, all those bent over rows and all those deadlifts at TPS really paid off. Yeah, how much does that thing weigh? Oh, over a thousand pounds easily. Damn. But it's on wheels, so like. That's true. Yeah. It's not. It's not that hard to uh, to pull it. 
because, um... Let me see if I can find the one from the GoPro that I'm Morning. Wait, let's do this. I think I found it. So let me do this to share the... Let's see. Let's do... Morning. Wait, let's do this. Three, two, one, sync. I've been asking you know, about the, uh, say what? the wiring on the sides because I have I have the same I have the same fucking issue with my my plants in the back because I have I put chicken wire around my fucking garden but there's usually like a squirrel intelligent squirrel that like digs underneath so I've been like burying that shit in the ground but I think that's kind of difficult but I think making a skirt like you did and just putting it down is a little bit more efficient because then they have to like either go through the skirt, which they probably can't do, or they have to dig down underneath further away. Yeah. So that's a lot smarter. Well, a squirrel could pro... So the skirt, um... The bottom part of the skirt doesn't isn't wrapped Mostly in hardware cloth. Building. Um, you should be able to see it now. I shared it with you, right? Yeah. Video game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That roosting bar on the inside, uh, which gives the birds a nice place to sleep. You know, chickens, their instinct is to get up off the ground so that they can get away from predators. Uh, even though I would say this coop is pretty much predator proof at this point. So, you know, let's just get right into so just the, the design here. In the wire. So all around this coop I is see, yeah. a skirt, or at least that's what I call it, which is made out of, um, this here is two by four inch fencing. Uh, that was cut, and then this is half-inch hardware cloth to wrap it and make sure that, uh, you know, a chicken can't get grabbed because before I put the perch in, they like to kind of huddle up in the corners here. And this is, you know, the two by four fencing is enough to make sure that a chicken can't get out, but a raccoon could have reached its hand in and grabbed them or a fox probably could have reached its snout in and grabbed them. So this way they're actually a bit safer, um, you know, wherever they choose to be in the coop. And like I said, with the perch, they tend to just go up on the perch at night. Now, anyway, now this skirt can be lifted up. So fold the corners up here, which... Um, so you see the skirt comes down and then it comes out. So pretty much if any predator to wants to get in here. Um, there was kind of a lot of starting and stopping. So, um, I think I started it a week before Thanksgiving. Um, I had the wood and I had the hog panels. So like the part that hoops over, um, I think there were three hog panels, and then uh, the back part, the very last one, was a cattle panel, which in the future I think I'm going to use cattle panels because they're, I'm pretty sure they're the same price as hog panels, but they're wider. So, and, and like with hog panels, they have, um, I think I actually talked about that in this video. I can fast forward to when I get inside. Outside of it. But um, hog panels have, I, I'm, it's probably the same amount of metal that's involved, but um, with hog panels, they're staggered closer together, I guess, to keep piglets in or something like that. And then with cattle panels, a calf, they're kind of staggered too with the cattle panels, but not as close together because I guess calves are big enough to where you don't need to do that super close. Oh, and then this here, this is the, uh, this is the cuck coop. As a brief aside. SL1. Yep. Yeah. Is the rooster What is that one used for now, all the fucking degenerates? Yep. This is where <laughs> naughty the roosters gulag. that attack the hens and knock over their feed bucket and do other kinds of rude things live. And, uh... Yeah, you guys are going to be going in the freezer soon. Well, that one there, that's Big Red. Um, pretty sure he's a Rhode Island Red. And I've got five Rhode Island Red hens. So I want to breed him together to get more, more Reds, because Reds are pretty good for egg production. Um, and they don't go broody, which 
is generally a positive. You know, I, I figure incubators are probably more efficient than broody hens hatching out eggs anyway. Um, but those other three guys. Do you hear how he grunts? <laughs> he's such a he's such a manly sounding rooster. Like he's got a deeper voice than all the other ones. He's even like he's not quite as tall as the alpha rooster is that's what i call the big white one that lives with the other hens um but this guy has a bigger comb a bigger waddle and he's actually heavier like he's noticeably heavier which i mean he probably has two pounds on the alpha rooster but he's he's very bitch made like he's he's really not a bad rooster um he's just i just separated him because i didn't want like, my hens were getting too harassed because I've got, like, 11 or 12 hens and then, like, 6 or 7 roosters. And uh, the white one in here and the really skinny one in the back, um, the Old English, were just being absolute douchebags. Like, th these are literally incel roosters because they can't fuck. Like, the hens always run away when they try to fuck them, and so they just fight them. <laughs> and like he literal the, psychopath mentality literal psychopath mentality like the white one there got out um because i was trying i was trying to grab i was actually trying to grab big red uh when my girlfriend was over and, and show him to her because she has only ever held a uh a hen and like one of my hens so i was like do you want to hold a rooster now you want to touch my cock <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I tried to go in and get him. The white guy got out. And um, I think we had let the hens out, too, because, yeah, I was moving the coop. And just, like, within ten minutes, he got in, like, three fights with hens. It is just, it's, it's just ridiculous. They're not sending their best. Actually, all of these came from, uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to dox them, but one of my neighbors, and they did not send me their best chickens. So I don't think I'm going to buy some, some I assume are, are fine people, but yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, they were definitely not sending their best. Um, so let's see if uh, I can find the next one. He's not a good guy. Okay, yeah, here we go. So this is the one side of, you know, sending these. He's not a good guy. Inside of. Inside of the see the video, Mike. Yep. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Neither is that white one. That white one's also very rude. He's known for attacking hens. Now, if you're curious how to keep roosters from fighting one another, um, I mean, I can't guarantee this will work for your roosters. These guys grew up together, so that's probably part of it. Why they're not so hostile, but you gotta gotta make sure they have plenty. So of how many roosters do you keep? Um, I made them in the in the mobile uh, mobile coop at a time one. Uh, well, both of them are mobile. This one can be dragged. The bigger one. Yeah, the bigger one. There's so there's actually two. Um, there's the alpha rooster, and then there's a yellow rooster that I call Mr. Blonde. But the thing about Mr. Blonde is he doesn't crow. And he's not trying to mate any of the hens yet. Like, he's a much more immature rooster. Um, he might even be gay. That's, that's, that's Amanda's theory, is that he's, he's a gay rooster because he's way more fabulous than all the other chickens are. Like, he's got really beautiful golden feathers, and so he, he might mistake. He might be a homosexual. We're putting these guys together in a pen without giving them food. And it's not like I was starving them or anything. I just, I hadn't fed them yet for the day and they immediately started fighting. So yeah, that's, that's, you got to make sure they have food at all times because they will start killing each other. <laughs> like it was, you could kind of see actually, like if you look closely, um, well, I, I think he's healed up from his wounds now. Like the, the big red rooster and the white rooster both like drew blood from each other um and it was actually funny because this one um over here with the uh I, I don't i don't know really how to describe them but the other one the other dark colored one that's not the old english um so they were all in there they were all fighting the old english i originally had him in solitary confinement um 
but I pulled out those other two roosters, and then this guy crowed for the first time after I pulled those other two roosters out as if, like, to do a victory screech or whatever. And it's so stupid, because either one of these roosters could kill him easily, especially Big Red. Like, Big Red would fucking murder this guy. <laughs> He's twice this rooster's size. And Big Red actually fights um, more intelligently, because he would get up on top of the perch, and he would, like, kick down and peck down. So, like... He's he's got them on he's got weight on them and he would take the high ground. He's he's got a concept of the high ground, damn. Yeah, he does. Together in a pen without giving him food, and it's not like I was starving him. That Yeah, that yellow one. That's Mr. Blonde. What's the deal? You guys don't want a free range? That Americana might have been the one that uh laid the egg this morning because it was blue. I'm pretty sure they lay blue eggs. Alright, so to, uh, actually, I think was this little whatever. Oh, I'm gonna go over. Yeah. Let me tell you guys a little bit about this design. So, right, here we go. the wood that I used is uh, pressure treated two by sixes. Um, pretty sure I told you 10 foot wide, 16 foot long. This stuff here, this thick stuff, is hog paneling. So this stuff is 16 foot long, and you know, bent into this arch. And um, I forget how wide it is, but it's actually a little bit more efficient to use cattle panels, because I think they're the same price as hog panels, but they're a little bit wider. So. These are hog panels, and you can tell by the staggering that they have with the openings. You know, so I think the idea is you put this towards the bottom so piglets can't get out. And this thicker stuff at the top, obviously we keep hogs in. And then, uh, this, let's see, so that's one, two, three, four hog panels. And then this is a cattle panel, a little bit wider. And then that's wrapped in regular old par poultry wire. Hello, Bardrock. You're just asking to get picked up right now. But yeah, that's wrapped in regular old poultry wire, and then, you know, it's held on with... Bardrock's uh, are my favorite. This is just some um, I want to get, like, a dozen more wire. of those in the spring. Miss. Who are you that's rolling at? That's the gray-looking one, spotted gray one, that one right there. Yeah, yeah, the one yeah. with uh, like kind of the stripes. Yeah, I got I got three of those um, as straight runs from Tractor Supply, and I got lucky because all of them turned out to be hens. But I want to get like, um, I, I think I really want to get into breeding barred rocks. I gotta see um, how their egg production is, and um, I I think barred rocks are a breed that tends to go broody which means when they lay eggs, they want to sit on eggs, and if you try to take their eggs from them, they're going to fight you a little bit. But I've got a solution for that. I've got, I've got intellect, and I'm going to build roll-away nesting boxes eventually because um, they're not even using the nesting boxes I made Who for them. Who are you roaring at? Right now. Like, the, the egg I found was, like, on the ground next to one of the wheels <laughs> in the back. So... I might, um, I, I've seen a video about, um, it wasn't a mobile coop, but it was like pretty much an automated chicken coop, like automated feeder, automated waterer. Um, and I think he had roll away nesting boxes. And so what I could do, cause chickens don't want to lay eggs where the sunlight is or where any type of light is. So what I could do is I could put a light on the inside of the coop and then Build the roll away nesting boxes. Um, like, kind of what I'm envisioning in my mind is um, a foot wide, one foot tall, and like a little flap on the front, like a little privacy curtain, and then have it be 18 inches deep and um, 12 of those inches, like basically a cubic foot, would be inside of the coop. 
and then the other six inches are on the outside of the coop. And um, it would be lower, so it'd be sort of like imagine a cube, and then imagine a wall that comes down in the back of the cube, but not all the way. It has maybe a three inch gap at the bottom for an egg to roll through. And then you've got um, sort of like a rectangular prism where the ceiling of the prism opens up, and then you can pick eggs out of it. And uh, the floor would be at an angle so that it would roll back towards that prism. And um, yeah, so like once they lay, because once an egg, when an egg comes fresh out of a chicken's cloaca, it's very, very clean. Um, but just like how, you know, women tend to poop after they have a baby, chickens tend to poop after, right after they lay an egg. So if you let that thing come out and roll away, you can avoid having to clean your eggs off and you can avoid broodiness, you know, chickens wanting to sit on eggs. Um, you can also avoid them breaking eggs. Like it's, it's just so much more convenient to have um, the rollout nesting box. So I'll probably build it like that with a privacy curtain and then I might put a light um, on the inside that, uh, I don't know, maybe just schedule it to like turn on and off automatically. I don't want it to be on at nighttime because then that's going to mess with their sleep. But I want it to just during the day while they're in there because that's when they're going to lay eggs have that light on and then they're not going to want to lay when the light's shining on them so they'll go in the privacy curtain it's going to be the only place that's dark and then do their business huh <laughs> i love chasing these little birds around um so yeah this is uh you know just held on with some stainless steel wire pressure treated wood um now there's a little bit of debate online i don't think there's too much debate against using pressure treated wood these days because the chemicals that are used to treat it are really not that harmful um, but generally what i found from my research is if you're not using pressure treated wood for raised beds um like Basically, as long as it's not touching the ground, there's really not a huge risk with, uh, or you know, if it's not going in the ground, get out of here. I don't want y'all filling up on spilled corn. Um, you know, if, you're, if your pressure treated wood isn't going in the ground and it's not touching the ground and stuff like that, then there's really no risk to uh, your animals there. Um, I don't even really see these guys pecking at the wood. So I don't think there's any chemical risk there, but leave your uh, thoughts below. If you're a sneeder, if you're a city slicker, you'll be ignored. Um, leave your thoughts below on whether or not I should paint this, because I have um, barn paint, you know, organic barn paint that I could put on this. Um, I'm just not really too sure if it's necessary. So, yeah, we've got... The two by sixes, um, this is a six by four, um, and so are these. So the idea here is, uh, I'm probably gonna be nailing and poop, but I'll do it for you guys. So this is a, um, is a swivel wheel, okay? So you can kind of think of this coop as a giant grocery you know shopping cart um it's got swivel two swivel wheels and two straight wheels and these are bolted in with uh galvanized lag screws okay and so that's how this thing is portable which You'll see in a moment, I actually feel like it's easier to move than that coop, because that coop, I just got to drag it. Um, oh, look at that. One of the reds are getting mated. <clears throat> yeah, that, that white it. hen. Loosen her up uh, so she'll lay some eggs. That white hen That's gets mated boy. the most. He was yeah, chasing was the reds. Um, <laughs> all right, what was I? He was chasing the reds about? around so the last day, screws. but he couldn't. To attach he couldn't get uh what do they call it enthusiastic consent and then um 
this uh, two by six or this four by six rather is what it's attached to. And then this is attached with deck screws to the frame of the coupe. Uh, these wheels, I think from the bottom of the wheel to the top of the caster where it bolts in is either 10 or 12 inches high. Uh, and so of course that's the reason why there's this skirt all around it. Cause obviously chickens can go in and out and so could so could predators. All uh, right, and um, I think the last thing we'll show, this is gonna be edited together at some point and posted to my farm channel. It's called The Based Farm to follow in that. Uh, sharing, uh, sharing, um, farm videos and stuff on the Mental Outlaw channel screws up the algorithm a bit because it's not talking about heckin' heckin' glowies and heckin' oh this would be a cool time lapse huh? Yeah. Let's get to where I actually pull this thing. Yeah, I would say this was easier to pull than, um, like, you remember when we would do the sled pulls at TPS? Yeah. This is easier than that with, like, five plates on the sled. There we go. Like, the wheels make such a huge difference in being able to move this thing. Oh, yeah, because there's a lot less friction, probably. Exactly. And that's, and that's <laughs> despite this field, which is so bumpy and lumpy. Like, I, I lost count of how many times I, like, twisted and sprained my ankle... When I first got there, you know, my weak city slicker ankles had to adapt. And, uh, well, also, I, I, getting good boots also helped, because I've got literally my most expensive pairs of shoes. In fact, I think these boots that I have, my, uh, Thorough Goods, I'm pretty sure they cost more than all other shoes I have combined. Let me see, I've got... I've got one pair of Jordans. Maybe I have two pairs of Jordans. Two pairs of Converse. And just a pair of, like, generic Nikes. Um, and the Thorough Goods are, like, 300 or something dollars. You know, it's one of those buy-it-for-life type of, uh, type of boots. Made in America! Good boots. Not fucking, I don't know, some Chineseium, like, my Skechers that I bought <laughs> that, uh, Project Farm recommended or well i don't know if he necessarily recommended them but i remember i watched a video from a uh, project farm by the way that's a pretty good channel if you're ever um thinking about buying tools or anything like that he tests different brands of tools in what i would consider to be a fairly scientific way um but he also had one where he was comparing uh it was like i think it was sketchers timberland work boots um, Caterpillar boots, Keens, which are like kind of expensive, like two hundred dollar boots, and maybe another one. Oh yeah, and so what I'm talking about here is, um, you know, the whole the whole idea of a mobile coop, right? Because some of you might not might be wondering, what's the fucking point moving a coop around? Okay, when I was a kid growing up on. You know, my dad's farm, you know, not not like a commercial farm or anything, just we had a couple dozen chickens and we planted a garden and stuff like that. The kind of the kind of stuff that you should do. All right, that's how you should raise your kids. If you're going to have some kids, you should first get the hell out of the city, all right? You should get you some chickens, you should plant you a garden and teach them some hard work so that they don't, you know, grow up to be communist and and try to plant a crappy ass garden and uh, what was that Chaz Raz whatever the fuck the yeah. Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone where <laughs> those fuckers don't couldn't survive for a week <laughs> or I think after a week the crime rate was like higher than Honduras it's like if you if you isolate this area and look at the per capita number of rapes and murders it's basically Honduras congratulations um, but anyway the point of this was as a kid. Um, I really, really hated cleaning out the chicken coop. That was the worst chore. Like, you have to do it maybe 
quarterly, like every two and you know every three months or so. Um, you have to take out like you got to put hay in, right? So you put down bedding for them, um, bedding in the nest, and just a lot of bedding on the ground, pr pretty much deep bedding almost. And then you've got to clean all that stuff out every three months, and like you're inside of a hot, dusty, poopy coop. And you know, in in the summer, I mean, I sweat a lot anyway. Like I literally turn my heat off, and I'm already starting to sweat a little bit and it's like 60 degrees in my house so you know i i sweat and so when you're sweaty in a sticky hay filled environment all that stuff is just sticking to you and it's super gross um and then you have to spread this hay into your garden or into your compost pile i mean that that part is relatively easy but when you do this you have in this case a 160 square foot area where the chickens are, you know, dropping their manure. Um, I mean, most of their manure is going to be like from here back, because this is where their perch is, or like maybe from here back. Um, I think, what is it, like two thirds of a chicken's manure is dropped in their sleep while they're on their perch. So, anyway, you can just move this, and then that whole area of ground is fertilized. So, just run your tiller over it, or you know, put wood chips to cover it up if you're gonna do no-till gardening, and then plant your garden right there, and boom. It's it's a win-win. And the chickens get fresh grass when you move them, so they get a fresh salad bar. Um, and when you keep them inside of a coop like this, they're protected from predators. So you don't really have to have dogs or, you know, something else to protect them. Although I'm probably gonna get some dogs eventually. I just have to do uh, some more research on um the right kinds of dogs to get i mean i kind of want to get german shepherds and they'll probably be good for sheep because i i might get sheep in the springtime if i can um intern with someone who has sheep because i don't have a lot of hands-on experience with sheep but i don't know if german shepherds would be good for uh poultry guardian dogs so yeah again any sneeders out there who do have experience with livestock uh, guardian dog specifically for guarding poultry in Virginia um, because uh, what's the guy's name Goldshaw Farms that's one of the um, Snee channels that I watch farm channels he has he has a lot of geese he's probably got like a hundred or so geese in Vermont and he's got I think it's Maremma's it's like a kind of long hair, white Italian um, livestock dog. But I, I think it might be too hot in Virginia for Maremmas. So I think I need something with shorter fur. Yeah, if you get a shepherd, make sure you get it from uh, an actual bull legit uh, shepherd family. Because I've seen people in the city get shepherds, and I don't know what the hell is wrong with them, man. They're like anti-shepherds, I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna trace his his lineage back to uh, you know I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna get one where his great great grandfather worked in the camps. So I'm gonna make sure I get a good <laughs> shepherd, <clears throat> a very legit Deutsch shepherd. Okay, so I think that's enough sneeding uh, stuff for now. I, I can I can practically people watching the podcast. Oh my god, don't talk about farming. I hate farming. <laughs> Let's share this. Um... None of us would be here today without farming. Exactly. None of us would be here without farming. It was the uh, first technology humans ever invented. Actually, no, it was fire, but then farming. This guy wouldn't be here without farming. This guy's my <laughs> hero. <laughs> so what is this? Portland man plows through the Grand Floral Parade <laughs> barricades. <laughs> This, this, okay, because like I, I feel this way so often when I'm driving. Um, it's not really parades that I deal with, but it's, it's, I've noticed this phenomenon where people who buy Kias don't seem to understand how to accelerate their Kia. Like, it's, this has happened to me so many times where I'm stuck behind someone in a Kia. And like where, where I drive, right? So going to, my farm, like when you're in town, 
The speed limit is 25 miles per hour, but it's a really retarded speed limit because there's only like, I don't even think there's 10,000 people that live in my town, okay? Like there's no, re and it's no, like there's not children playing nearby. There's, there's no reason that it should be as low as 25. So when I'm like in town, I'm doing 30. And then when I get past like the Walmart, I'm doing like 45 because there's no reason to do 25. And I've never seen, and a lot of people do, okay? A lot of people out there driving over the speed limit, not getting pulled over by cops. It's wonderful. But then I get behind a Kia that drives 20 miles per hour, or even 15, like under the already too damn low speed limit. And this is why I've come to the conclusion that the Kia boys, uh, much like Thanos, are a natural phenomenon that are bringing balance to the universe, okay? So if you're an old lady who drives your Kia 10 miles under the speed limit that's already too low, a um, uh, young future rocket surgeon needs to take your Kia and do 90 in a crowded neighborhood, okay? This is the universe balancing itself out and... Uh, Looks like looks like Trump has entered the podcast. That's that's interesting. Anyway, let's watch this dude. Who is my hero? Oh my god! I'm stuck on the fucking freeway. It's all over the place. They got it all blocked off. The lights in an exit. It's all blocked off. Every motherfucking exit. You bastard! God, I feel this guy's pain. I feel it. <laughs> I like his, uh... Oh, that's not it. I like his, uh... I like his soundtrack that he's, that he's about to commit all these crimes to. Yeah, actually, I think we're gonna mute that because it's probably heckin' illegal copyrighted music. Um, let's let's fast forward to where it gets good. Yeah, this is where it gets good. Hell yeah, fuck those cones. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me I can't? Ah, oh, fuck your barrier. <laughs> I got four Damn. wheel drive for a reason, bitch. <laughs> Bro's got a GTA mode. <laughs> actual GTA mode, dude. Holy shit. He's actually, like, good. Did you see that? Yeah. That was so clean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy this, shit. I tell you, I love this guy. This this guy, like, this... this was, Yep, yeah, do it. Fuck all of these people. All of you. Why are you in the streets? Why are you in my... <laughs> oh, can't go that way. Dude, he's... <laughs> Dude, that, that fucking side drive and then getting through... Dude, that was so clean. <laughs> Holy shit. God, this this guy's my hero. Dude, if I was like Team Ferrari, I'd hire this guy immediately. But like, yo. Right? Here. This man clearly has some skill. <laughs> <clears throat> just just no fucks given. Just driving through the... And then I think a cop's going to come up on a on a bike pretty soon. <laughs> on a, or Road on bike. a motorcycle. Yeah. And just, yeah, there you go. Ignore him. No, what are you talking about? I'm going to call Lester real quick. <laughs> and remove my yeah, one level. Lester get my one level off. <laughs> <laughs> you just told him to fuck off. To get out of here. <laughs> I, wish, I wish he would have, like, rolled down the window and been like, I'm white, sir. It's all right. I'm yeah. not Ahmed. I'm not going to run people over. <laughs> This isn't, uh, what was that, that in, in, in Nice, France, right? Where, like, they creamed, some terrorists creamed a bunch of people with a truck. The van, yeah. Yeah, an assault, an assault van. Yeah, we got, so got uh, a So what, what would he even be charged with, like, just reckless driving? He's getting charged with everything, dude. Are you kidding me? Like, because, I mean, it, it depends on how they want to charge him. And I think this guy also um, had some priors or something else. I think he's like a, well, I think he might be a sex offender. I'm not entirely sure. I, I think I read that somewhere. But, um, you know, endangerment, um, what, what, you know, reckless, well, way more than reckless driving. I mean, 
Um, I don't know if it would be attempted murder because it's not like premeditated, but like definitely attempted manslaughter, fleeing and evading. I mean, that's that's a felony. He's he's. Oh yeah, that that right there is a felony. Yeah, because yeah. he's he's fled the cops twice now. Um, <laughs> and you know, like, and and there's gonna be civil shit too, because you know, like, one of these people that moved is like, ow, my leg. Fucking. So there's gonna be civil fines. There's. There's emotional damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like this guy, this guy's going in for a little bit. Yeah, it's like, oh man, it's it's just. <laughs> He's my hero. Let's see, does it actually go to when he gets pulled over? No, like he's he's pretty much he's pretty much out of it at this point, out of the uh, <laughs> out of the um. That's when you go. Right. That's the the light, later part in the video they don't show you is he goes to San Andreas Autos and gets his car resprayed. Yeah, right. He goes to the pay and spray. <laughs> San okay. Andreas Customs. Oh yeah, I saw this one when I was overseas. Yeah, I remember. Like, like half a second, I was like, I wonder if this is Kenny. No, 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 no. Because no. here's so here's here's the thing, right? This, this then I guy, realized what actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, let's show the folks. Um, so this this guy who um, is also a hero, um, he uh, took he he took a a, a little he, he changed up the uh, the tannerite filled dog, right? Because you know, if you want to have protection from the ATF, the trick is you get a you get a stuffed dog, and you fill it with tannerite, and they just can't help themselves. Okay, when they're when they're coming to seize your uh, modified weapons, okay, they're going to shoot all of your pooches. But if you just so happen to fill the stuffed dog with tannerite and and nails and other stuff that creates a bunch of great shrapnel in Minecraft. Um, there may or may not be effect in effect, but this guy here, I mean, he, uh, <laughs> he's, he's a pretty cool guy. Police out here raiding his house, probably for some nonsense. Just, just cause he's, a, just cause he's an unlicensed pharmaceutical manufacturer. Okay, licenses are hard to get. I'm trying to get licenses to sell stuff from my farm, and it's a pain in the ass. I'm probably going to take the Joel Saladin approach. Goddamn. Now, here's my question. Raid this, How bitch! <laughs> that, that was my first reaction, was like, the ATF can't raid your house if there <laughs> is no house. Exactly. My second question is, how the fuck did the house to the left of it oh. come out completely unscathed? Nope. <laughs> yep, that's right. Swap out, swap out the pigs for firefighters. Our job is done here, boys. <laughs> we got enough people killed. We're good. God, this guy, this guy took the Claymore Roomba to another level. He's like, if I fire the Claymore Roomba at all these propane tanks <laughs> and these gas canisters... Oh man, yeah, that was that was great. So okay, let's let's get into a heckin a heckin technology um a heckin technology topic. So Elon did the thing that you're not allowed to do. You able to see my screen still, Knitter? Yep, I got okay. you. So. There was a guy, um, what was it? So there's this guy, I don't know who this guy is, but he's saying, to the cowards hiding behind the anonymity of the internet and posting Hitler was right, you got something you wanna say, why don't you say it to our faces? And there's this, which probably won't play because Twitter's extra gay now, but I don't know. There's probably, there's probably some Mossad, you know, gangster guys. Oh my God, we're so heckin' tough with, uh, with, you know, the greatest military to ever be created as our allies. Um, and then this guy, what's this? The artist formerly known as Eric said, okay, Jewish communities have been pushing the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. 
I'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest shit now about Western Jewish populations coming to the disturbing realization that those hordes of minorities that support flooding their country don't exactly like them too much. You want truth said to your face? There it is. And then Elon, oh man, our boy, our boy replied and said, you have said the actual truth. Okay, so let's let's break this down. I remember seeing a video um, a while back from some uh, Jewish liberal uh, lady. I think it was actually on Gavin McGinnis's old um, podcast. I, I forget what it was called, but anyway, they're talking about um, the the U.S. Mexico border. So we got to let all the Mexicans in because they, you know, just they they just want an opportunity and blah, blah, blah. But then when you propose a similar solution to letting uh, poor, starving, you know, Arabs into Israel, right? Because if you look at Israel on a map, right, it's like the only Jewish area and then it's surrounded by Arab areas. And then you look at it at night. Israel is the only one that has power, and then it's kind of surrounded by a bunch of people that don't have power and don't have infrastructure because, you know, of course, the, the real reason for this, okay, actually, let's, let's make sure we do this, going to go full screen for this. Okay, so the reason that this happens has nothing to do with racism. It is because Hebrew people are God's chosen people. Okay, we at the Libre podcast, we support Israel and the Hebrew people. And all of their uh, actions and doings. And uh, it has nothing to do with uh, terrorism and forceful colonization of Palestine after World War I. Okay? I don't even know what you guys are talking about when, when you talk about that stuff. I mean, it's, it's forceful colonization? You kidding me? Read the Old Testament. That was always their land. Uh, but anywho. Uh... Yeah, um, it's, it seems like a bit of a double standard uh, to some extent, you know, when we're talking about uh, Jewish liberals and some of the things that they will. Well, OK, wait, let's be specific. Jewish Zionist liberals, because there's some Jews that are not Zionists. There's some Jews that don't believe the Jews should be in Israel and blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to Jewish Zion, American Jewish Zionist liberals, right, I think that's the accurate label here. They seem to advocate for certain policies in America, and I guess the same thing would apply to Europe, because, um, you know, with refugees in Europe and stuff like that. They seem to apply or, or advocate for certain policies in other people's countries that they absolutely would not allow and would not tolerate in their own country. Pornography is another one. I'm pretty sure pornography is banned in Israel. Um, but, uh, many of the chosen people are heavily involved in the pornography industry and as a result would obviously want it to flourish in, um, you know, in other Western countries. So Elon said this and, uh, basically the rest of the world canceled, uh, Twitter or X as it's now called, right? So... Let me see, do we have a list of all of the <clears throat> different places that canceled Twitter? Uh, okay, here we go. So Google, Walmart, Vodafone, General Motors, uh, Slack was another one. I mean, if, if you were, you know, on any tech news stuff during the week when this happened, it looks like this is October 23rd, so it was, it was a little while ago, but... Um, yeah, pretty much everybody canceled Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. They, you know, canceled their integrations. They say, we want absolutely nothing to do with this platform because Elon did an anti-Semitism against the chosen people who did nothing wrong. And uh, what, what are your thoughts as somebody who actually has a career? <laughs> so... Here's, I mean, 
in my opinion, I don't I don't know if if it was this event part in particular that caused a super high drop because I know that Twitter has been implementing. Oh, it was a bunch a bunch of it was this this it was, was this this was event. the straw that broke the camel's back. Okay, because I because yeah. I was looking at this and I I was like, well, there are probably other things that were causing a general decline, right? Because well, yeah, Elon for a time Elon's been allowing a, based posting. Yeah, he's been allowing yeah, well, even, based yeah. posting. But like, I remember they implemented you had to log in to view certain tweets now, right? And they fucked with the API, which decreases eyeballs on actual Twitter. So I mean, you're using a Twitter third party client right now, yeah, to view Twitter. So that hurts. But I also think that a lot of companies get pressured into this kind of shit because, um, I don't know. I don't even know what the problem with this is, honestly, because it's not like it's Twitter themselves saying that whatever the fuck he said, I don't even know. It's not even, it's not even problematic. It's just him expressing his own opinion. Yeah. It's just him. He, ha he happens to own Twitter, but that doesn't mean Twitter has the same opinions as the guy who owns it. Mm, I don't know. I, I feel like Twitter now is, uh, I mean, it's not, I don't know if it's necessarily a dictatorship, but I feel like it's more like under Elon's direct control. <laughs> Right. I mean, not not obviously he's not fucking writing code and shit, but, yeah. you know, he says do the thing and like the people do the thing. You know what I mean? Whereas I feel like Twitter before when uh, Jack Dorsey was in charge, I I honestly question how in charge of Twitter he really was. Because it almost seems like uh, they started and it, it almost felt like human re Twitter human resources <laughs> is who was in charge of Twitter. Before, because, I mean, if you just looked at the kind of shenanigans and the just ridiculous stuff that people would get banned for. But, um, uh, I think it's okay now, though, because there was, there was a, um, not an apology tour. He was very clear that it was not an apology tour where he, uh, went to visit Israel and see firsthand. Some of them returned uh, home. Not home yet, but uh, all the all the horrible stuff that Hamas is doing. We had to raid that. Uh, we had to raid that children's hospital, and we found fewer guns than Kenny has in his own apartment. But that's besides the point. You give him a child-sized bulletproof vest. Yeah. <laughs> like, you should have even covered in half of his chest. It's only well, covering, like <laughs> you shouldn't. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have acted, spoken out of turn on Twitter. <laughs> he said the problematic stuff, so we we gave him the the lower tier of of uh of bulletproof dust. This seems very odd to just have people like walking around the site of what was an attack. And possibly also is a and taking pictures. It's kind of weird. It like has the same kind of vibe that I see when I'm in the city and there's people like taking videos and pictures of like the old graveyards. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's like why? Why do you need to take pictures of that shit? Well, because we got to make media to show the rest of the world what's going on. And uh, we got to shut down the Hamas media because because Hamas is fake news. Hamas has um, deep fake technology. They they actually hacked they hacked me, right? Because as you guys know, I have excellent deep fake technology. But during the last Libre podcast, uh, Hamas actually attacked our podcast, and they uh, stole my deep fake technology, and they also stole like the last hour of uh, Mike's audio. So, you know, this is why we stand with the Israeli people in their. Uh, good fight to um, to uh, to maintain and and you know what even expand the state go for it is Israel should be let's just make the whole Middle East all of the Middle East Israel all of it I I want to come back to the point you said where it was um Western what would you say American Jewish Zionist liberals is that what yes. you said yeah. And yeah. European I, I, Zionist Jewish liberals. I think you can cut off even like 
the, the Zionist Jewish part of that and have that statement built still be correct. Because that applies for basically any like Western liberal is they tend to say, I want X policy. But then when that policy is applied to them, they're like, no, 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 I don't do that. But well, yeah, you got you got a point there. People. You got a point you know, there. Very, very yeah. nimby. But like in NIMBY in a way that it's they they kind of have this they think they have this moral high ground. But when it times when, when it comes to when time comes to the rubber to meet the road, they just don't do it. Well, yeah, they just don't fucking do it. That's that's definitely the case. That um, happens all over the place. The only reason I preference uh, the Zionism part is I feel like um, liberals in general, or at least American liberals, are less in favor of Zionism. Like, because for example, our our next topic is um, it is it is this. just politics strategy. Because like you have a higher cult, you have a higher number of people in the anti-Zionist coalition than you do in the Zionist coalition. It's well, all about getting a coalition yeah. of minorities together to vote for you. So. Well, well, yeah, I mean, especially amongst young people, because like this was this was a big problem on, um, you know, on TikTok and on Twitter and, and other online platforms. There's a lot of teens who unfortunately have the wrong opinion. OK, once again. Which I should just make this easier. So. Israel is the rightful homeland of the Jews. They they deserve it. OK, they did nothing wrong to take it. The, the events where the British and the Americans allegedly aided, uh, I guess, what are now, you know, Israeli terrorists or whatever to overtake Palestine after World War Two. That never happened. That never happened. OK, we we were fixing. Uh, we were fixing what the Romans did. Okay, uh, Hadrian uh, sacked Judea, and that was wrong. That was very wrong. Bad Hadrian. And um, yeah, so so that is the chosen people. The chosen people belong in the chosen land. You know, he did it because his twink died. And then like a week after the Jews just happened to throw a riot and he was like, I'm just going to I'm just going to fucking raise the entire thing to the ground because he was mad that his twink died. He's like, I ain't had no boy pussy in over a week. I'm gonna go fucking genocide some people. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, um, teens and I, I guess liberals in general, because I mean, you, you know the old how the old saying goes. What is it? If you're not a liberal by the time you're 20, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative by the time you're 30, you have no brain. Um... And, you know, teens tend to be a lot more liberal. I know I was a lot more liberal as a teen. Um, they're more pro... Uh, they're more pro-Palestine, you know. They're, yeah, pro-Palestine, as, as the uh, Vice article um, says. So, yeah, I think part of that is... Um, I mean, it definitely seems like it's punching down, right? Because, I mean, Israel... Uh, has amazing military technology, you know, some of which they did themselves, but they're also best friends with America, and we have the greatest military technology in the world. And so when you're using that against dudes who have AKs and paramotors, it, uh, it seems a little bit mismatched, and I mean, you know, yeah, like, granted, the, uh, what was it, the, the paramotor attacks and all the other subsequent attacks were, like, what was it, 9-11 times 6 or 9-11 times 10 in terms of, like, per capita um, murders or whatever. I got, I, got, I got a legitimate question, though, is that Israel literally has a system that is designed to be able to shoot missiles out of the sky. Mm-hmm. How the fuck do you not see a few chuckle nuts on paramotors coming in? Because it's it's mismatched. It's not the right it's not the right tool for the job. It's kind of like if I don't know if you were duck hunting and you were trying to shoot ducks out of the air with an AR-15. Like that's way harder than just taking a shotgun and loading it with birdshot. But Mossad is able to track down like ninety-eight year old German people who just happen to be the janitor at a fucking concentration camp in Argentina and like kill them with a knife. How the hell do you not see like Muhammad and a few of his buddies coming in on a fucking Jeep Wrangler? 
No, 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 no. A a a Toyota Helix. Okay. Yeah. Remember, sorry. it's Toyotas. They use Toyotas. My bad. <laughs> yeah, they use Not Toyotas. <laughs> Um, I don't know, man. I mean, I, again, I think it's, I think it has to do with having the right weapon for the job because the, uh, what is it? The Iron Dome, it's designed to shoot down missiles with, I think, other missiles. And, you know, a lot of that stuff is probably automated. So it probably didn't even pick them up, you know, like a slow, low flying aircraft is just not not calibrated for the iron dome but apparently they have um what is it the iron beam there's like a new a new version of the iron beam it's there we're unironically using jewish space lasers we're in the best we're in the best timeline jewish space lasers to maintain the uh the holy land all right yeah. so let's talk about this cyber truck I made I made a little video about the Cybertruck. Have you seen the Cybertruck? Do you have any strong opinions one way or the other about the Cybertruck? I have seen the Cybertruck. I really like I, I was trying to argue with one of my friends about getting it because he was interested in it. And I'm like, I, I really can't see a use case for it. Like, you might as yeah. well just go get an F1 because at least when you're talking about a truck, you want reliability. Mm -hmm. And why the hell would you go with this thing, which looks like it was rendered using a PS1? that is completely untested right and it's made by a company that has like zero experience making any sort of you know high lift trucks when you can just go get an f-150 well it's it's Ford. made by a company that is arguably the most hostile towards right to repair and self-repairing that too um, in the history of vehicles i mean and and like you said with a truck like, like the case that I was making in the video that I made about this like a couple weeks ago or last week was um, there's two types of people that buy trucks. OK, so there's people who buy it as like just a flex or whatever. So these are the kind of trucks that, you know, they never get mud on them. Like Yuki is covered in mud right now. We've had a lot of rain here and I've I've literally had to use my four wheel drive like on my farm almost every single day because I can't get up certain hills with two wheel. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's got mud on it. There's some scratches in it. There's all kinds of tools and nonsense in the, um, in the cab of my truck. And like, you know, it's, it's a certified SNE truck. It actually, when I um, took it to the shop to get inspected, I had left a can of a relatively new can of WD 40 in the back and you know somehow with it getting moved around and stuff the whole can went off in the back seat of the truck so my truck straight up smells Ooh. like wd-40 <laughs> damn <laughs> it's it's lubed like a motherfucker but yeah like there's people who actually use trucks for blue collar work and if you're one of those people you're probably going to want to be able to fix your truck or at the very least you're going to want to be able to bring it to you know your neighborhood bubba in the neighborhood that can actually fix trucks and have him fix it and that's not going to happen with anything that tesla makes especially not this cyber truck um the range on it is not great um it's so the amount that it's able to tow like, like when you when you compare the amount that it can tow to its weight, um, it's it's not a really good balance because this Cybertruck weighs about as much as a um, I think it's a Super Duty F three fifty diesel, which can tow I think like twenty thousand pounds, give or take, and this does like maybe a third of that. Now there is one thing. That I like about the Cybertruck, which is really, really dope. And that's the fact that the power output of it is enough to you can literally use a Cybertruck as a backup generator for your home. Like the the amount of um stored power that it contains and, and also the output is high enough to run like an arc welder, I'm pretty sure. That's something I can never do off of you. Um, Yuki's power output is actually kind of annoying because she only does 100 watts um, when she's running, and then she does, I think it's 500 watts idling. But I don't really like to use the power output when it idles because that's a great way to drain your battery. <laughs> because I don't have a giant battery pack in there, I just have a regular old car battery. 
Um, but yeah, like this this headline right here pretty much goes to show you that when you buy something from Tesla, you really don't own it. So you don't have the right to repair it. You don't even have the right to resell it. So I guess all you can really do is cancel your pre-order if you don't want the Cybertruck, which a lot of people have done already. They canceled the pre-order because, once again, it was over-promised and under-delivered. It was just, ugh, not great. Not a great truck at all. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, that's kind of my problem, though, with, with most electric cars is that oftentimes it requires like a special software or firmware kit from the manufacturer to actually repair it. So if you decide to push for all electric, you're going to really run the risk of getting rid of a lot of local blue collar work because yeah. they're either not going to be able to pay however much it costs for the licensing and the training and the equipment from the manufacturer to use their diagnostic kit, or they're going to have to increase prices or people will just go to the manufacturer because they can do it for free or faster. And that, yeah. I mean, most electric cars require that shit nowadays because like they just have a very complicated built-in computer system. Unlike my car, which is just like a normal 2005 car that has some electronics, but you can fix it pretty normally by yourself or at, at a repair person. Yeah, I think my, my truck's pretty simple there too. Pretty sure Yuki runs Windows 95. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then there's like the issues with charging. I mean, that's that's probably going to start to get mitigated in the future. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take for charging stations to reach my neck of the woods because like they don't they don't exist in southern virginia as far as i know like the <clears throat> when we went to go to my um to uh my sister's proposal party in williamsburg i don't think we even saw a tesla until we got over the james the, the bridge that goes across the james river so it's like yeah you gotta be you gotta be in the city um let me see last night when i went to colonial heights i don't think i saw any teslas i don't know if there's like tesla chargers in colonial heights like yeah they're just not they're not back here in this neck of the woods but i mean like i said that might get mitigated in the future there's also um i don't think i pulled it for this uh podcast but i remember seeing a headline about a road that they're building in detroit where i think it's supposed to charge a electric vehicle as you drive over it so that that's pretty dope if if it works you know the way that i remember the headline reading <laughs> if you gotta park then it might be a problem because parking in detroit is not a wise uh thing to do unless you want all your wheels and your fancy battery and your so someone's going to steal the ai out of your cyber truck for full self-driving and they're going to shove that bitch in a 96 honda civic <laughs> just to see what happens wasn't that a plot of robocop um it might have been and uh speaking of robots you know the zuck who's pretty much half robot is uh he's he's having a problem with his platform. So this is something that uh, I think I was a little bit privy to because I watch the uh, Predator Catchers, you know, those like Chris Hansen, I guess like copycats. Well, a lot of them aren't really Chris Hansen copycats because like Chris Hansen always did sting houses. And there was one season, I think, where he was meeting up with people on the beach, which was like, <laughs> that was like the wackest uh, setup. But um. There was one you were telling me, like, I think, was it, I don't know if it was Chris Hansen, but it was one where he found the guy in a grocery store. And, yeah. Like, he just started well, like, this guy fucks kids. Like, oh, that was, it. um, which, which one was that? I think that was Dads Against Predators, but they're. That shit was funny. I think they're defunct now because they, they got, I'm pretty sure they got banned off of YouTube. Like, I'm pretty sure there was a, there was a fist fight or two that they got in and you're not, you're not allowed to punch predators on YouTube. That's against no. the terms of service. Um, 
Yeah, that one, there's actually, you know, there's so many of them now that it's already like kind of come full circle with scams and shit because, uh, you know, Dads Against Predators, they got banned for, I think, what I just stated. There was another guy I used to watch a lot, and I thought he was a really good one, named uh, Colorado Ped Patrol. But he did a tax scam. He uh, was saying that his predator catching uh, organization was a, um, what's it called? A 501c3 or something like that? Where Nonprofit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nonprofit. And, um, you know, he would get donations and stuff from people. And then people were like, hey, can you give me your heckin' 501c3 certification so that when I do my taxes, I can be like, hey, I gave money to a nonprofit so that I don't have to give as much of my money to the U.S. government so that they can send it to Ukraine and Israel, right? So he's like, uh, 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 bam from the channel. <laughs> Every time they ask for that, and yeah, he, he got found out that he's running a tax scam. I don't know if he got banned off of YouTube for that. I feel like tax scamming isn't necessarily against the terms of service. Um, the one I think I watch the most now is, um, oh God, what are they called? I think they're called Predator Poacher, Poachers, but they're like, they're more on Rumble. Because if, if you watch their stuff on YouTube, they censor it so much. I mean, I guess you have to, to be compliant with their terms of service, but it's like, it, it sounds like, um, you're talking on, you're listening to something on the phone and it's like breaking up because they just mute it whenever they, you know, say something you're not allowed to say. So they're mostly on Rumble, uh, Predator Approachers on Rumble and the guy that runs that, I think his name is Alex Rosen. Um, and yeah, they, they catch a lot of people. But anyway. Wasn't that the, the guy who caught EDP? Or yes, he's the one who originally yeah. caught EDP. Yeah. And then- Caught him twice. <laughs> well he caught him i think he caught him the first time and then there was another guy named skeeter gene and i think he's got the biggest predator catching channel right now um he's got pretty high production value and i mean it's there's a lot more you know editing and stuff that goes into his videos um and he collabed with Gideon. i think that's something that really put him on um but yeah i i think i think that edp's um case got dropped because you know when you do this stuff you got to do it a particular way and then it also depends on where you are because um you know with uh predator poachers they go to um they've gone to california and new york a few times and you know in california and new york they basically have to catch you in the kid for it to be illegal right? you can you can at least that's what I've seen. I mean, I'm no lawyer person, but it, it seems like a lot of those people uh, are able to get away with it in states like that. But um, anyway, to bring this full circle now, almost every one of the Predator things that I've watched has at least one platform owned by Meta involved where these Predators are using it to talk to kids. So it's either Instagram or it's Facebook Messenger or it's WhatsApp. And another thing that um, I think this is with Instagram in particular, it's not just predators that are using it to talk to kids, but there's also CP traders that use Instagram. So the way that they do this, at least from what I've heard through the predator poacher people, is... You'll have an Instagram page that posts teens and young girls and stuff like that in bikinis, which is not against Instagram's terms of service. The problem, though, is these pictures of the young girls in bikinis are oftentimes, and, and also, you know, young boys, too, because, you know, whatever, gay predators, straight predators, whatever. Um... Oftentimes, the images of these children that are clothed on Instagram are children that are in the um, national um, thing for missing and exploited children. Like, they're known to the government that, like, there is CP of these kids floating around on the dark web or whatever, and then this is, like, a clothed image of them. And then 
the post on these Instagram pages or like the bio about section or whatever of these Instagram pages will say, oh yeah, follow me on Telegram, which is another platform that they do a lot of the CP trading on. Um, or they've also mentioned Session and Signal a couple of times, which I mean, I you know, I guess it makes sense because if you're able to... You know, if if, se if session and signal don't actually keep any information about you, and and you know, heckin' drug dealers and terrorizers use them, then obviously predators are going to use them as well. I didn't realize well, they were that smart. Well, there's there's tears to this, right? I mean, yeah, it's just true. like it's just like when we talk about the hackers, who you know, some of them, like uh, Pom Pom Perrin, will mix together their kind of clear web identity and, and their um, dark web identity. And they'll do stuff like talk to other hacker people and say, oh yeah, I was combing through this leaked uh, email database and I didn't see uh, this email of my friend, <laughs> first name, last name, my year of birth at Gmail in the leak. Um, so yeah, there's there's degrees to it, but I guess like the dumber ones, are on the clear web, on things like Instagram. Um, they're on um, like Facebook Messenger and like unencrypted chats. And, and the other thing about Instagram is when you start following these, I guess like, um, not decoy, but what's, what's the word I'm looking for? These like kind of low key, you know, somewhat low key CP traders that are trying to get you onto another platform to actually send you CP. The Instagram algorithm is like, oh, you like to follow this kind of stuff. Let me recommend other ones to you. <laughs> and so it like actively feeds into the um, predator's um, addiction or, or wrong wiring or whatever it is. So. Um, yeah, the state of New Mexico is suing Meta, its platforms, and CEO Mark Zuckerberg for allegedly allowing a site to become a marketplace for predators in search of children upon whom to prey. The lawsuit filed Tuesday by the state's attorney general. And this was um, posted on December 6th, so earlier this month, Tuesday. Uh, it's accusing Instagram and Facebook of becoming a breeding ground for predators, using the sites to sex traffic, groom, and solicit sexual images from minors. The suit also claims Meta uses certain algorithms to keep young users on the app and others to push explicit content to children, fostering the twin dangers of sexual exploitation and mental health harm done to children on its platforms. Uh, so that was another thing that I talked about in the um, video about, uh, I think the title was Meta is actively exploiting children for profit. Um, they had... So these were internal slides that would have been shown to like top brass and, you know, during all hands meeting or maybe not during all hands meetings, but during like marketing meetings at Meta showing the growth of users on the platform that are actually too young to use the platform according to Meta's own terms of service. Because uh, I think on Instagram, I don't think you're allowed to use Instagram if you're under 13 but yet they have charts showing users that are 12 years old, users that are, are 11 years old, and showing how when they start using the platform, essentially the younger the age that they start using the platform, the higher the chance is that they become a daily active user when they're 13, 14, you know, when they're actually old enough, right? And it's the analogy that I was making is it's the same thing that the cigarette companies knew about back in the day where they would actively advertise to children because they know that if a child ends up smoking our cigarettes, the chances of them becoming a loyal customer once they're of age is going to increase dramatically. Yeah, so I have this kind of so if, if a child is too young to join Facebook, how do they know? But their actual ages because i know like you just put in a fake age right to get on facebook yeah so how the fuck do you tell if they're 11 well if they put in like unless you tell through images well i mean facebook you know you have to assume everything you do on those platforms is read by facebook or meta or whoever um <laughs> so maybe they can get it through dms 
Um, maybe they can get it through the bios and stuff, because um, that's another thing that uh, I think the Predator <laughs> poachers talked about where, well, this is more on dating apps. Like, they would also put their decoys on dating apps like Tinder and stuff. And you got to say that you're 18 to get on Tinder, I'm pretty sure. But then you can just put in your bio like, oh, I'm 12, by the way. Right. <laughs> and then obviously you put images that are obviously of a young, um, you know, someone who's underage. But um, I, I don't know for sure how, how they figure that out. I just remember I went over the, the data in <clears throat> one of the videos that I made about it. So here we have a response from uh, Meta to its claims that it's struggling to keep child predators off Facebook and Instagram. They responded to the Wall Street Journal from Friday that claimed the social media giant struggles to remove child predators and child exploitation content from the platform. Um, let's see. Five months later, per the article, tests conducted by the journal as well as by the Canadian Center for Child Protection show that Meta's recommendation system still promotes such content. The company's taken down hashtags related to pedophilia, but its systems sometimes recommend new ones with minor variations. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's the thing, right? If you take out like um I don't know, I, I think like pizza is one of the the words, like cheese pizza or whatever, they just switch it to uh I don't know, feta pizza or something like that. Or uh I think cup well cupcakes is what Skeeter Gene calls it. Just to avoid YouTube censorship, but I don't, I don't know if that's like an actual pedophile lingo or whatever. Um, okay, so here's Meta's response: We created a task force to review existing policies, examine technology and enforcement systems we have in place, and make changes that strengthen our protections for young people, ban predators, and remove the networks they use to connect with one another. Meta wrote in a statement on its website task force took immediate steps to strengthen our protections and our child safety teams continue to work on additional measures i don't think they're doing that great of a job i mean for for them to actively choose this platform and, and there's probably some degree of it on all platforms you have you have a real especially if it's something really big like if you're a youtube or you're a twitter or you're a meta or you're anything like this it's at some point, there's going to be people breaking your terms of service in the most reprehensible ways and breaking the law as well in the most reprehensible ways. But I feel like there are ways to fight it more if you really want to. Like, um, I I've never really been that active on Twitter anyway, but I heard that one of the big things that Elon did after he took over Twitter is he shut down a lot of the CP trades that were going on in people's DMs. Because uh, I remember reading some tweets from, um, well, there were screenshots of tweets from, like, Japanese people <laughs> who would say, like, uh, you know, they would be, like, lowly posters, and they would be like, oh, child belly erotic, like, shit like that. Like, if you translate whatever the Japanese that they're saying is. And, uh, yeah, that was actively on Twitter, and um, I don't know if it's still actively on Twitter. I think they just took all the, um, all, they took all the pedophilia and they converted it to anti-Semitism. They replaced it with anti-Semitism, which um, some people would probably say is worse. Uh, you know, of course, here at the Libre Podcast, we, uh, we stand with this, all of its people. So I don't know, I mean... This is kind of a double-edged sword because, like, the they're really at least with with platforms like Meta and YouTube and Twitter, right? They're fucking huge, so it really isn't entirely feasible that you would stop all of it. No, because at some point it, it's just it's just way too big for any company to deal with, and there there are a couple of ways you can address it, right? I know Meta is trying to address it with AI, but I don't think AI is at the point to where it's capable of, of solving that issue. Moreover, it can be ineffective. Like I, I was reading a post about how someone who got their account banned because they posted a picture of them with their with their child at a farm. Ah. And they got banned because yeah. they thought it was they thought it was CP. So 
and then you, you I mean you can hire people to do manual reviews but then like that's how are you going to get people to do that all day without, you know, going insane and well, that's finding the enough point. people to do that shit is going to yeah. be impossible. I remember, I think it might have been on Vice, they interviewed a content moderator from Meta or from Facebook or whatever. And yeah, like it's, it's they, they, they get PTSD from seeing that shit. Because it's like if somebody flag something for child abuse you have to watch it and you have to verify whether it's child abuse and it's it's probably going to be some really sick shit i mean like beyond you know obviously screwing a kid is already really fucked in and of itself but i remember there was one um you know this this vice video or whatever it was where they talked about how they had to see a video of a little girl uh basically getting raped by a pig right so it's it's the most fucked depraved stuff that you can imagine or possibly not even imagine right so yeah that's gonna mess people up and then even then you potentially have another issue where there's there's women out there who look like they're underage like i remember th this was years and years ago it might have even been before we're born I, I don't know how old the the actually let me do this see if i can uh bring up a safe for work image <clears throat> okay and now a quick word from our sponsor hi i'm mental outlaw the base to win store is giving me this time to talk about something that is very important to the both of us data data is the reason that base to win sponsors their local disc program a national data loss prevention effort. Think about this. Many of you out there using cloud storage have no local backups whatsoever. Do you realize that the cloud is just some other guy's computer? When you depend on cloud storage as your only method of backup, you're cheating yourself out of all the data that is so precious to you. And believe me, if you have local backups, you can very quickly recover from almost any data loss incident. Listen, You've amassed a lot of important data over the years, possibly terabytes of waifus. So don't blow it. Don't depend on cloud storage. And if you're doing it, stop it. Get some hard drives. Base.win wants to give yourself a chance, a chance to own all of your data. And so do I. Let's see. She looks a lot older. Let me just make sure. Okay. So this is a... Uh... This is an adult actor <clears throat> named Lupe Fuentes, who definitely in some of her earlier work looked like she was underage. And there was actually a case where a guy had um, one of her DVDs. You know, this is back when people had porn DVDs. And he was he got stopped at the airport by TSA and was arrested for possession and maybe even trafficking since he was traveling of child pornography and if i remember the story right she actually like went to his court case and you know testified like yeah i was 19 years old when this was recorded and like i'm of age and everything but like in her uh, earlier videos I'm, sh I'm sure some of you people watching are going to be doing some research <laughs> later on <laughs> Uh, you know, so, someone in the comments is like, yeah, you got, you got the sauce for that, bro. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw, you know, some of her videos when I was a teen boy, um, as you do. And yeah. yeah, like she, she looked like, she literally looked like girls that I was going to school with. And, you know, I was in high school at the time, but she's of age. So you run into that and you, you also run into a lot of that with Asian women. I'd imagine too. They tend to look a lot younger um, than they actually are. So it's like I don't know if you can have AI do it, even even having a human do it. What I personally think is the best solution is honestly these predator catchers, because I used to watch a lot of um, like code blue, like police body cam footage, like code blue cam. Um, Oh, man, I'm blanking out. Police activity, like, channels like that. And I can only remember, like, 
maybe once or twice where the police caught a predator on their own. Or, you know, they followed, like, a someone noticed it. Like, actually, I watched one recently, but I don't think it was Code Blue Cam. I think it was, like, E EWC police camera, something like that, where there was this guy at a pier um, or, you know, a place where there's boats and there's, like, parasailing and stuff like that who was trying to abduct... I think it was, like, two young boys, but he thought that one of them was a girl because they had... And he was... Um, originally, his story was he said that he was uh, the kid's father and that, like, him and the mother were divorced and, like, that's why they didn't recognize him and blah, blah, blah. It was actually really strange because the way that the guy was interacting with the police and everything just seemed... Very odd. I think, um, I think they mentioned that he was bipolar and he was like off his meds. But anyway, that's, that's like the only, there, there's like a handful of them, right? I can probably count on my hand how many times I've seen police organically catch a predator or somebody, you know, notice that predator behavior is going on and then they call the police and they, um, you know, the employees that were at that, uh, pier, Kind of, like, held him there. I mean, not really physically, but they were, like, following him around and making sure he didn't leave. And that guy that was the Predator actually turned out to be a, um... He actually turned out to be a lawyer in... God, I wish I could remember the, the area it was. I looked up his law firm, but there were, like, some comments on it. Like, this guy's a child Predator. <laughs> but he had... Other, other than the child Predator comments, he had five stars. Like, he was, he was like, a really good um criminal defense or, or whatever lawyer so yeah I, I think that the the predator catchers are the best way to deal with it because you know a it doesn't really seem like something that police are doing a good job of on their own i mean obviously the police do get involved eventually with the predator catchers but it's a free market solution the predator catchers, as long as you allow them to post onto YouTube, to post on Facebook, because th this is the problem they tend to run into, is when you make this kind of content, you have to censor the stuff so heavily, and a lot of time it's not even allowed on these platforms. So then these guys aren't able to make money, and so it kind of, you know, that takes all the fuel out of the tank for predator catching. Okay, it needs to be something that people are able to make money off of. It needs to be something that where they're able to make the content entertaining so that people like me will, you know, I listen to it while I'm building a chicken coop or whatever and um, act actually allow this to, to happen because clearly Meta is not able to police their platform on their own. And yeah, I, 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 I think that I like that solution. I think there's a couple of things to iron out, though, because, it, 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 I mean, it's essentially modern-day bounty hunting, um, where they're more proactive than... The, because the police are very reactive. Like, they're not yeah. going to do anything unless you tell them something's happening, right? Yeah. Um, it it kind of sucks, because, like, I've been told, you know, as someone who goes through computers that I get from random sources, I've been told, if, like, if I come across anything... My best solution is to take the drive and like throw it in a fire. Because if I bring it to the police, they're gonna think I'm the pedo, even though I'm the one who's giving it to them to have them solve the issue. Well, there's probably so a what, I've been, what, I've been, what I've been told. As long as you yeah. follow it. You know. But what I've been told from a from a friend who is a lawyer, my best solution is to just destroy it. It's just get rid of it. Just throw it in a fire and forget about it. Because the risk of me coming forward with it is higher than any sort of credibility I would get. But wait a minute. Okay, let's. Time. But let's. Okay, let's pretend we were back at Geek Squad, though. Yeah. Well, that that's yeah. different because that's an actual entity, and they have like you know they're a reputable brand. So it's you were like, saying okay. if you were just repairing like the computers that you get off of um, like this one back there. Gets. Yeah. Yeah. So if you find CP, you just destroy the hard drive. That was what I was told, yes. Well, I it guess that best. makes sense. Yeah, that probably makes sense in that case. Because yeah. there's no customer that's coming back. And he's going to be like, I had, a, I had a lot of very important images. Did you know? <laughs> of, of my family. 
<laughs> that are gone. Um, but yeah, speaking now, of the of the AI thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, I, I think the element that gets lost in this conversation is that parents need to be more involved. Like, it seems like these platforms, I mean, I'm not saying they don't care, but traffic is traffic, right? And, and like, if you start cracking down on kids using your platform, that's going to hurt your traffic. So investing in a measure that actively reduces the traffic of your website is generally not profitable. So in, in a macro term, it doesn't help, even though it is something you should be doing. And if you're a parent, right, I think part of the re responsibility is on you. Because if these platforms Absolutely. are making it super, super easy to have your kids sign, like I looked at Gmail the other day, right, when I was reading this article, you can sign up for a Gmail account as a kid through your parent. But at 13, at 13 years old, right, imagine like a actual real decision you made at 13 years old that actually had an impact on your life, right? You can detach that account from your parents without their consent. Like it just sends you an email is <laughs> like, hey, do you want to detach? And you hit yes. Your parent can't do anything about it. I mean, they get an email about it saying you did it, but they can't stop you from doing it. So they make it really, really easy to just allow kids to use this stuff. And kids will always find a way, especially if you tell them no. Like if you tell a kid, don't do that. Yeah. They're going to do it. Oh yeah. They're going to go and do it because that's their normal intuition. So yeah, I, I, I figured out, you know, the password for yeah. it, parental controls on the direct TV and yeah, know, got access to uh, HBO and all that shit. Um, well, here, here's what I think a big problem with the, the parent, because I, I agree, it should be on the parents. But here's where I think the, the issue is. So number one, how many of these parents are actually keeping up with technology? Right, like, like take, take my nephew, for example. So I've got an 11-year-old nephew um, who's really into uh, like Fortnite and Roblox and stuff like that. And his mom and dad buy him, what is it? I guess it's Robux and uh, V-Bucks. But they don't know anything about, like, what he's spending it on or, um... They, they, don't, they don't know anything about Roblox the game. They don't know anything about Fortnite the game. They don't have a clue. They don't have a clue about... Like, games that he downloads onto his phone. I think they have parental controls on his phone, but it's like, you know, that's something... The rating as far as games go are ultimately set by, um... Like, Google, because it's like an Android phone, so it's set by Google. Because, like, I remember he... There was this one game I was watching him play. Um... How old was he? I think he might have been... Eight when he played this game. And the game itself seemed innocent enough, but I remember one of the characters on it was Rick from Rick and Morty. And he was, uh, what was it? He asked me, why does Rick burp all the time? And that was one of those things where it's a little bit difficult to answer, because I wanted to say it's because Rick's an alcoholic. <laughs> but it's like, I don't, do I want to get into explaining alcoholism to my eight-year-old nephew? And like, because... You know, I've watched Rick and Morty. I don't think that's something that an eight-year-old should be watching. All right? Yeah. Like, there's... That's that's not a good, like, influential program uh, for a kid to be watching. And I don't think he was actually watching Rick and Mer Morty per se, but it's like, this is a character that gets, you know, involved. Like, same thing with George Floyd, right? Wasn't George Floyd a Fortnite character? Didn't he get made a Fortnite character? I vaguely remember no. that. No I way. Think, that must I, be a meme. But, I mean, they, they've made they've made Fortnite characters of like Peter Griffin. So I let me double check this. Yeah, go, Google that real quick to see if that's real. Because I feel like George Floyd was a Fortnite character, and that's not something that's, that that's not that's not gonna be. No, no, no. I don't. I think I think you can make him. Like okay. I don't know if you have like a have like a custom thing, but I don't, I don't think he was a Fortnite character. Okay. All right. Uh, 
See, that's why it's but apparently they did remove police cars from Fortnite as a response to George Floyd. Yeah. Well, you know. That's uh that's another person that did nothing wrong. Israel did nothing wrong. George Floyd did nothing wrong. Um <laughs> log list of people who did nothing wrong. But um our uh, our next topic, right? Speaking of AI. So so you want to try to use AI to fight CSAM. Well, my friend, it's being used for the opposite of that. <laughs> AI is being used to generate CSAM by teen boys to make fake nudes of their classmates, sparking a police probe. So this was something uh, that I talked about as well. And I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about this because on one hand, it's not real. Like the same, it's, it's kind of the same opinion that I have about Loli. Like it's kind of weird if somebody has Loli. I, if, if I knew a guy had lowly and enjoyed lowly i don't think i would want him to watch well my niece is 16 so i don't know she could probably beat that but you know if i had a younger niece or you know younger nephew what's what's the boy version of lowly i think it's shoda something like that you know if they had that and they you know actively consumed and enjoyed that i don't think i would want them like around my nephew unsupervised right i get that it's a drawing okay and i get that you know, what is it? People like 2D instead of 3D, but... And, and they're technically a thousand years old, yes. Yeah, and they're technically a thousand years old, but it's just the, the similarity, the fact that it is a cartoon boy or a cartoon girl that they have a sexual attraction to makes me personally uncomfortable with having my young family members around them. I don't think they should go to jail. I don't think they should be put in a cage. I don't think that they should be on a sex offender, you know, registry or anything like that. Like, I, I don't think that should be illegal because at the end of the day, nobody is actually being harmed. It's a drawing. But with AIC, Sam, I feel like that line is getting thinner and thinner here, right? Because you can take... So, when I was a kid... um. They had these things. These were these were actually like threads they would have on uh, I think B, where you would take a clothed image of a girl or woman or whatever. You'd upload it to B, and then you'd ask for somebody to X-ray the image. And so what that means is some dude downloads the image. They put it in a Photoshop. They you know search through their database of porn stars and you know amateur nudes and whatever. They find someone who has a similar body. Because if you think about it, there's only so many human bodies and, like, faces and stuff out there, right? Like, even, you know, at this point, what are there, like, 8 billion humans? We've already gotten to the point where we're starting to repeat, where, you know, we're, we're generating the same models over and over again. And there's, like, you know, doppelgangers and stuff, you know, like, when I'm not making the Libre podcast, I play for the Boston Celtics and, you know, so... There were people that could basically Photoshop nudes, fake nudes of somebody that looked real. And so I feel like this is in the same boat, but with AI, you just have to be a prompt engineer, which I feel is, it requires less skill than Photoshop. I mean, how, have, have you really played with any of the like AI image generators? Like, um... Bing just made a new one. I haven't done image generation. I've I've only done a chat. You've only done the chat, okay. And, yeah, I, I've seen people who, who claim themselves to be prompt engineers. And I've seen, like, the prompts they make. Yeah. And it almost seems like you're making tags for a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing, even with this... Because um, there's... So, it's, it's, it's like a... It's like a bit of an arms race, right? So a lot of this AI stuff is proprietary and there's, um, you know, APIs and stuff. Like, you don't actually own it. The only one I'm aware of that you really own is Stable Diffusion. And so when people are using, like, Bing's AI to, to generate, um, what is it, Dolly 4? I forget what it's called, Bing. 
I don't know. That'd be something good to look up real quick. What is the name of Bing's or Microsoft's new AI image generator? But, um, you know, with all of these, whether it's GPT-4 or whatever, they, they always come up with ways and words to, to ban so that you can't make AI CP, you can't do a racism with the AI, you can't do a sexism, um, you know, you can't do Call stuff... The... It's called Image Creator, but it's powered by Dolly 3. Okay, Image Creator powered by Dolly 3. So yeah, like, they're, they're constantly trying to come up with ways to make it so that it can't be racist and it can't be sexist and it can't do CP and it can't do all this other stuff, um, or I guess fake CP. But then somebody just comes up with another way around it, right? It's like, um, you know, you probably can't put, like, naked kid into there, but you could probably put, like small petite you know flat chested woman okay and then you essentially are going to get something like um you know lupe fuentes or you know insert whatever modern porn star <laughs> probably looks underage i'm sure there's some of them out there um and then boom now you've got what essentially looks like the ai uh cp or in this case you know, there's teen boys that are able to use it to generate stuff that looks like the, uh, that looks like real girls. So this was, um, Westfield High School in Westfield, New Jersey. Okay, I was thinking that they were, oh yeah, it's a teen boy. Does that make sense? Um, so let's see. To create and share fake nudes of female classmates. It's unclear how many students were harmed. It's also unclear if what the boys did illegal. There's a law restricting the creation of fake sexual. And this week, President Joe Biden signed an executive order urging lawmakers to prevent a wide range of. Yeah. So I think. The easiest way to police this is to throw this under the same uh, laws that like revenge porn get thrown under. Because to me, that seems like a similar thing. Because, you know, making it making even if it's like AI generated, if it's made to be like if you're not making like a lowly, right, if you're making like an image that is made to look realistic, (laughs) then it can be classified, I would say, as the same thing. But isn't there an exception to doing that of public figures? I think there is, but so I mean, I think I think that I think that only works if you're like, you know, not making I don't know. I don't know why, but well, here's the reason I bring that up. So let's say you know, a lot of people say I look like Jason Tatum. So let's say you make fake AI revenge porn of Jason Tatum. Um, and then you also want to throw, I don't know, like a Linux penguin in there or me getting fucked by like a GNU or something, right? So it's obviously me, but you kind of got that out where you're like, no, it's Jason Tatum. There's also a basketball down in the corner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how, how do you get around that? How do you deal with that one? I mean, wouldn't it be under the same category? Like, no, I mean, you can make AI. Figure. Well, I yeah, don't but that, does, that, does, that, does that apply? Does that apply to like porn though? It's gotta, it's gotta, because um. So okay, if they're a public figure, like definitely if they're in government, a hundred percent if they're in government. Oh yeah, because... you you know you know there's like fucking thousands of pictures of AOC out there, man, already. Well, there's um. People there's, being uh... generous about that shit. I remember the well there's a there's literally a, a porn and there's probably like fucking 16 sequels of it because there always is in porn called um what is it nail and palin where uh i think it was lisa ann played uh sarah palin and was getting like you know probably dp'd by russians and shit like that so it's like yeah if you're if you're a, so okay palin what did palin do wasn't she the governor of alaska so she's in government. Okay. Yeah. If you're in government, 
I feel like sports players are public figures too. Though, yeah, but that, but that, in that point, right? That's like explicitly fake. Because like they come out in the first couple of seconds, and like you know, if you're not dumb, that it, it's meant to be a parody, right, of that person. Maybe the, the difference here I'm saying is that it's meant to look exactly like that person, right? Because like you can say that yeah, Lisa Ann played sarah palin but she doesn't look exactly like sarah palin and you know that it's meant to be a parody of sarah palin okay i guess you can say the same thing about this but if you make a nude ai image of someone without their consent and because you don't have their consent it's not explicitly come out as oh this this is a random parody of, of a public figure then I can see that that would be classified as revenge porn because it's not explicitly like a parody. Hmm. Like, like the present AI videos, right? Like those are explicitly made as parody. So people know that they're not, you know, Joe Biden really isn't saying, you know, oh, I like playing COD zombies and shooting all the fucking German zombies, right? Yeah. Obviously that's a parody. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. I just feel like it's, I feel I feel like it gets in. There's there's so many weird loopholes here because I mean there's always like a, yeah there's always gonna be like weird loopholes you have to figure out because you can draw player. it right like you can draw yeah. fake porn of somebody yes and if you're really good at drawing you can make it look really realistic yes you just can't AI generate it. And so then you run into an issue of how do you prove something is AI generated? Obviously, with the proprietary spook AI, it's pretty easy to do because there's a record of everything. But if you do a stable diffusion and you generate something that looks really realistic and then you sit there with your arms crossed and said, nope, I'm just good at Photoshop. What do you do at that point? Is there any recourse? I mean, most states aren't even doing anything about it. It says, uh, what is it, Virginia? Oh, my state did it. My state did a thing. So, I mean, <laughs> if, if you don't share it, like, if you decide to go out and make, you know, AI-generated porn of, you know, some random e-girl on, on Twitch or something, right? And you keep it to yourself, I mean, as long as you keep it to yourself, I guess that's fine. Oh, right? yeah, I mean, nothing's illegal if you don't get caught. <laughs> so Breaking sure. news. Sure, I mean, yeah, I guess... Actions are illegal if you don't get caught. (laughs) I mean, I guess, yeah, if you keep it to yourself. All right, so let's see. States that stepped in were Virginia, California, Minnesota, and New York, passing laws to outlaw the distribution of faked porn. And New Jersey might be next, according to John Bramick, a New Jersey state senator, who told the Wall Street Journal that he would be looking into whether there are any existing state laws pending bills that would criminalize the creation and sharing of AI fake news. And if he fails to find any such laws, Ramick said he planned to draft a new law. Yes, protect the children. That's a great way to get vote. I think the easiest way to, to fix this, at least right now, is basically what I call using a fire hose, right? In a security situation where you just like overreact, you oversubscribe, Right. So if you want to just like, okay, we're going to ban all AI fake nudes, like all AI porn. Obviously, that's not going to fly because there's stuff that is legal. There's AI there, but I mean, here that doesn't even say it's AI, it just says faked porn. So I think in Virginia, if you live in Virginia and you draw me with your dick out, you're going to jail. <laughs> Simple as. <laughs> and then once you have that, that blanket, then you start walking back. You know, yeah. you, you kind of cover everything and then you carve out loopholes to the legal stuff rather than trying to target stuff and then having to fill in loopholes that exist. Virginia apparently did shit like that with weed, too, like right after I moved here. So like in I think it was in July, they banned the sale of like Delta 8 and all the other hemp derived cannabinoids. Um and it's so dumb because, like, apparently that stuff is hopping in North Carolina, like, just to the south of us, or just to the south of me. Um, you know, they've got it where 
So I think in Virginia, I'm pretty sure in Virginia, you can grow your own weed for personal use and you're allowed, I don't know, maybe more plants, but um, you can't sell it. And I think you're also not allowed to make concentrates. Like I remember reading, well, you can make concentrates, but I think the law is written so that it's, you can't have 20, you can't have more than 25 parts THC to CBD. So you could probably make like hash and uh, I don't know, maybe like butter. I mean, there's a million different things that they call it now, but um, what's the really pure stuff? Like the THC diamonds, I don't think you could make those in Virginia because those are like 98 or 99% pure THC. So that would be illegal. Um, it's, it's really weird because like there were literally, I remember driving by a shop that sold Delta 8. I never went in there, but now it's gone. Wamp wamp, you know? It's it's odd, because this was the home You've, of George uh, Washington. I think George Washington grew a bunch of hemp. I don't know, I don't know what you call them down there, but you have, like, state troopers on the on that border. Just, you know, <laughs> post up there, spawn camp, and people will go to buy the good shit. Probably, because... Well, because, yeah, because North Carolina is, like, just, when I look at the laws about stuff that I care about, it seems like North Carolina is so much more based, because it's, like, um, so I, I think the gun laws are more open in North Carolina than they are in Virginia. I mean, my, my concealed carry license from Massachusetts has, um, reciprocity in Virginia. By the way, did you, did you ever get your concealed carry license? I need to get my good boy letter. Yeah, you keep bullshitting. Like, I mean, you keep bullshitting. In the words of Mel Gibson, I hope you get raped by a pack of niggers. <laughs> you deserve it for not having a gun. Oh, no. For not having a fucking gun. What's the matter with you? Uh, <clears throat> this part of the podcast I... brought to you by SIG. <laughs> <laughs> not really. SIG should sponsor me, though. Give me, an M give me an MCX Spear. I want the heckin' new military rifle. And I want the real one that's chambered in, like, what is it, 4050 or whatever? I forget what it is. I mistakenly called it 762 by uh, 40 or 762 by 50, but that's not it. We invented a new round. It's like an even spicier 762. You know? Have you seen well, that? Have you seen the new, the, the new rifle? No, I need to. I, I've, heard, I've heard some people talk about it. I'll bring it up. It's yeah. pretty it's pretty tight. It's like it's basically a, a really pimped out AR ten. Yeah, I I'm gonna be moving to Maine soon, so that's a state where you can be kinda based. Oh my, you're gonna be a Maine boy? Yeah. They're they're more based in New Hampshire mainly because there's so much fucking land so they can't really... <laughs> It's kinda hard for them to uh to get you up there. Not Portland though. Portland is like fucking paused. You just gotta go up like <laughs> <laughs> like Augusta and ironically the capital isn't that paused because it's because the most populous part is down south because that's where all the people who work in for co for companies in Boston live because they want to be close to to that shit so everybody else who's based lives like north of Portland okay it's 6.8 by 51 millimeter that's the that's the new cartridge <laughs> Um, and let me show you this rifle, sexy rifle. It is very nice looking. Yeah, and um, they don't have the suppressor. They're not showing it with the suppressor, but it's got um, an adjustable gas tube. So you can basically just turn a knob on there to, um, you know, run the suppressor on it. But yeah, it's, it's pretty much, I think the idea was... Um, you know, when the military was running, what's it called? The M4, I think. It's um, basically an AR, basically it's a short barrel AR-15. That's also full auto, of course. Um, or I guess a short barrel M16, technically. It's the full auto. Um, uh, what is the round? 5.56 five, NATO out of a, I guess, 14 inch barrel is not very effective against heck and terrorizers so we're like oh we need a bigger bullet <laughs> and so they went with uh 
Well, all these ones here on, on SIG's website are 762 by 51, but the point... That's a civilian version, though, so... Yeah, well, you, you can buy... I've, I've seen them where you can buy them, um, Chamber, or at least I think I did, but they're, like, double the price, so... I think if I get one of these, um, I'm in the market for a... Uh, I want to get a truck gun. I want to get, um, well, I'll show you what I want to get. It's, uh, it's this. No, it's not that. Is it? It's this. Uh, So I'm not going to get a Draco. Dracos are hot garbage. But I think I might get a Zastava Arms ZPAP, as they call it, M92. So that's um, an AK pistol got a 10 inch barrel so it doesn't take up too much space i could keep it uh you know like under well I, I wouldn't keep it in my truck but this is it's something i would take with me to the farm um because uh we haven't seen the bear in a while i mean there was a bear that i think lived in an area that got logged you know like some forests where they were doing some logging over the summer and then i've seen it once on uh my property when I was staying on the farm over the summer. And so that's why I would do patrols with my AR. <laughs> Just walking around. Man, that's great. You should come you should come to my farm someday. And Yeah. I do want to. Wanna go look at the chickens. Yeah. Get a get a little introduction to how your life's gonna be in Maine. Because I have a feeling you're gonna live like me, just colder. <laughs> I yeah, I, I do I do want to. I'm trying to convince my fiance to fucking get chickens you have a fiance holy shit yeah dude the girl you i've been seeing for like girl? four years yeah holy hell congratulations to mike yeah man thanks holy shit that's fucking great dude i'm trying yeah. to commit to get chickens she's like i don't want chickens i'm like it's fine I'm not chickens gonna kill them She'll fall i'm not gonna kill them someone else will kill them I will kill them. <laughs> do you want to send them to me to do the dirty work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just going to get like a chicken one day for dinner and be like, where'd this come from? Huh. No. Well, that's that's kind of the plan. I mean, um, you know, I, I have to. So here's a little loophole that I'll I'll teach you about. So. Um, Is this, this the Joel Saladin loophole? Yes. Yeah, the Joel uh. Saladin loophole. Did I tell you about this already? I think I did. You did. It's the one where he uh, accepts donations from people and then he gifts them chickens. Well, this is a different one I'm talking about. Oh. So, um, at least this is the case for Virginia. And I can't speak on other states, but in the state of Virginia, you do not need a license to sell a live chicken. Okay, so if you come to my farm... I can sell you a live chicken. No licensing, no nothing. So that chicken is now Mike's chicken. And then I take off my farmer hat and I put on my butcher hat. And I say, howdy, Mike. That's a cool chicken you got there. Would you like me to uh, kill, butcher, eviscerate it for you? And you say, yes. So I take Mike's chicken and I kill it and I do all of that stuff. And you can pay me for a butchering service. And here you go. Mike's chicken is now a dead chicken that Mike and his fiance are going to eat and uh, enjoy and not contribute to the uh, factory farming industry that does horrible things to animals. I mean, if you actually care about animals, you should... Uh, start raising your own meat because the way that the chickens in the stores are raised is um worse 
than how the chosen people were treated because they're kept in cages where they can't even turn around. Um, they don't get to free range. They never touch grass. They never get to eat bugs. Um, they have to be fed antibiotics because the people who are keeping these chickens in these giant like chicken factories are basically overcrowding them. You know, normally you don't want to have more. Normally a chicken, you want to have at least two square feet per chicken. And that's if they're in a coop and you let them out to free range. Um, if you do a chicken run where, you know, you're kind of keeping them in an enclosed space, you want them to have at least four square feet per chicken. But, you know, when you look at these giant factory farms where they have to feed antibiotics and you, you have to, um, they'll have little like wash buckets that you have to step in to make sure you're not bringing any contamination into the coop because like they're that susceptible to diseases where, you know, you get one little speck of avian flu on your boot and then the whole flock dies and then, oh, Oh no, I don't get to make a bunch of money as a Tyson or a Purdue chicken farmer. No. Legitimate question, wouldn't it be better to have them exposed to said pathogens so that their immune systems develop a response and then later generations of chickens will be more or less susceptible to said disease? If they're overcrowded, they're all going to die. Well, yeah, because it'll spread. Yeah, it'll spread and their you know immune systems are probably also weakened because of how they're living, because they're not living the way a chicken is meant to be living. You know, the chicken is the red jungle fat. So you kind of want to, uh, you know, mimic red jungle fowl environment as much as you can, which is them living in a forest. These all look like my old, which is so aggravating. That's why he's so aggravating, because he's basically a wild chicken that doesn't know how to act. Yeah, like, they need to be out somewhere and be able to go up in trees and stuff like that. My chickens don't really eat trees. They'll eat stuff out of trees sometimes. Jump up and they'll grab something. But yeah, this is how they're, uh, this is how they're really supposed to be living. And it's really easy to keep chickens. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. You know, feed them, water them, give them a perch to go on at night, you know, make sure their coop is predator-proof, which um, I just open-sourced. Well, I pretty much open-sourced the uh, coop design here on the podcast. I'm planning to also upload the video to the based farm, which uh, show you that are watching channels like oh, I've got 13 subscribers cool stuff so yeah you want to see my farm adventures I've got so many videos from like over the summer and stuff that I haven't even uploaded yet that I'm planning to put on here yeah, you can have a verifiably organic homestead. That's that's what I came up with for what I'm doing. So the uh, grand plan, once I can get all my licensing and whatnot, is I want to be able to sell eggs, um, sell... I'm, I'm probably going to sell meat at, like, locally, you know? So if somebody wants to come to me um, to buy it. That's actually what Goldshaw does with his geese. I think you pay like a hundred dollar deposit on, um, his birds. And then you come to his farm in Vermont to pick them up and you pay like, uh, I don't know how much he charges per pound, but you know, you come to his farm to get the geese. He's not dealing with, uh, refrigerator trucks or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's probably how I'll do it, or I'll sell them at farmer's markets. And on the package, I'm going to have a QR code that'll take you to Based Farm, or um, I post a lot on Instagram too, so Base.Win is my Instagram. Some of you have found it. We're almost to 100 followers there. Um, where you can actually see how the chicken that you are eating lived its life from... The moment that it was a itty bitty chick to, you know, when they were chickens and you can see that they touched grass, they got to eat, uh, you know, mice and actually act like little dinosaurs.
that's what they really are. They're dinosaurs. And over a hundred million years, the tables turned where our ancestors would have been getting devoured by these guys. And uh, now we keep them in a cage and make them lay the eggs and an autistic Gen 2 farmer <laughs> is always sticking a camera in their face. <laughs> <laughs> and and being a weirdo. All right, see, we always we always end up coming back to to heck and farm life. Man, I'm so glad that you're in game. That's so dope. You see, guys, I, Linux users yeah. can get chicks. <laughs> I I was trying to I was I, I had two computers I was repairing for a friend of mine. Uh, well, actually, I was repairing one for my fiance and then repairing one for my other friend, who's also a woman. And the parts came in at the wrong time. I was going to make a video with a joke about how I am a Linux user. And I talk to women, but I, could, I couldn't get the timing down. And I was like so disappointed I couldn't make that joke. But uh, it's all right. <clears throat> next time, I will eventually get to make that joke in a video. All right, so... Moving on to uh, piracy, online piracy. It's uh, it's it's on the rise, according to a new study from the European Union's Intellectual Property Office. It has increased for the first time in years. In fact, piracy rates have been falling for several years. So, the reverse in that trend is significant. So, I think that a big part of this is streaming services starting to get too greedy because i remember actually when i was at my girlfriend's house yesterday i thought that we were watching netflix because you know she just was streaming something on tv and then there were ads apparently it was hulu and i don't know if like there's a free tier for hulu i think that that was something she was borrowing from a friend but um yeah, like you're paying for something and then on top of it, there's ads that you have to watch. And it's like, I just feel like all of these streaming services have steadily becoming more and more shit. Um, same thing with Spotify. Apparently Spotify is also rigged. I was listening to uh, Wheeler Walker Jr. talk about that, how, you know, you basically just buy the number one spot on Spotify, you know, pay them to have the number one spot. Um, let's see. The discovery that piracy has increased suggests that something has changed. According to their study, 48% of all piracy is caused by people illegally viewing TV content. 58% of pirates access illicit content via streaming sites, while 32% downloaded episodes from torrent-based file sharing services. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's my theory as far as what's going on. Streaming services so, are just getting worse. I, I have a... I have a cycle that I've proposed as to what's happening. So I think what started this off was when Netflix went digital, right? And they had a whole bunch of IP like shows from different companies, right? You had like NBC Universal that all had stuff on Netflix, right? Like, like I'm going to use the example of The Office. The Office used to be on Netflix. Then when companies started seeing how much money that Netflix was raking in from their IP, they were like, why don't we just host our own Netflix? And then every single one, every single IP maker, like NBC, Disney, right, Discovery, uh, they went off, Hulu, they went off and made their own streaming service. Okay, and you got a point there. That took IP away from these other, like, bigger service providers like Amazon, Hulu, and Netflix, who really specialized in serving the content. They then had to go make content of their own, which in some cases worked. I mean, Stranger Things was pretty big for Netflix, but I mean, most of the crap they push out nowadays is pretty trash. Like, I don't even know of anything that they put out anymore. And this, th these are typically like very expensive to produce things that take a lot of money. And because these companies only really had to spend money previously on just expanding infrastructure to serve more content, they now have to make up the difference through other means because people aren't going to watch their stuff anymore because A, they don't have as much IP as they used to, and B, 
they don't have good IP people want to watch. So what do you do? Well, you then start reducing the service quality. You introduce ads, you get rid of account sharing, which people like doing. And then it just starts a cycle because you have to keep trying to push out new IP, which costs more money, and then you keep reducing service quality. And I think that if you want to have better, if you want to have less piracy, you need to focus on service quality. Because there's a quote from Gabe Newell, like back, I think, 12 years ago, that he said, it's always a service problem. It's not pricing. The quote is, if a pirate offers a product anywhere in the world 24-7, purchasable from the convenience of your personal computer, and the legal provider says, the people that actually make it, says the product is region locked, will come to your country in three months after the US release, and can only be purchased at a brick and mortar store, and the pirate service is more valuable. That's yeah, why people are pirating, absolutely. is because their service is more valuable to the consumer than the people actually making the service. It's not the price, it's the service that people are looking for. And because it's really easy to go to like, you know, one, two, three, free movies.to than to sign up for five different streaming accounts to get the full series of a show you're trying to watch, it just makes sense. It's not pricing, yeah. it's not ads, it's just, well, partially ads, but it's just service quality. And they don't get it. Yeah, because I mean, once you sign up to five or six of these different services, I feel like at that point you're paying more than you pay for direct TV. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've gone back. We've reverted. <laughs> yeah, we've reverted to where now some people are paying like $500 a month for all these different streaming services. I mean, there's no way you're consuming all that content either. So, no. you know, I mean, if you're doing all that shit, and if you are, then stop it. Touch some grass. <laughs> Seriously. Why are you consuming so why are you sitting in a fucking room? I I, I don't even I don't even pay for all that shit. I, I just I just leech a lot of people. The only I think service I pay for is YouTube TV, partially for my folks, because they went to ITV a while ago and took me like a month to figure out one that had the channels that they wanted. Um and I will say YouTube TV does work quite well. I don't have any issues with it. You know, I'm, you can log online and just watch TV and it's fine. But people have like Hulu and Netflix and Peacock and Amazon and whatever else the fuck is out there. Like you don't need all that shit. No. People, but people just keep it because they're like, oh, what if I want to watch something one day? It's like, then just pay for the subscription for a month and then don't buy it. So did your dad... Um... Oh, no, this is somewhat related. Did your dad end up creating a uh, X account to watch Tucker Carlson? Because he's on oh. X now, right? <laughs> is he still on X? I thought he like was on X and then released the show and then hasn't done anything since. Does he, does he still have a show on X? I don't know. This is something This is something I guess we'll look up. Last, last I heard of Tucker Carlson, he did an interview with Andrew Tate on X, and I haven't heard about him since. Me either. Let's see, where does Tucker Carlson work? Uh, I don't want to read this guy's whole... Okay. Because so I heard that he company. started a show on X, and then I I saw the reaction to the first show where he was filming in, like, a fucking cabin. And then I heard nothing since. Uh... God, I hate having to read this article. Twitter after being suddenly... It's different. In April, it's contented since Twitter. He's in brief. Oh, okay. So he's in his contract. Uh, it says on Forbes he's forming a new company, and maybe it's up in the air still. Let's see, it's all from April, April, July. Tucker Carlson tonight, but isn't that the original? Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like that was a pretty effective way to get him out of the ears and eyes of boomers. Because my, you know, my stepdad is, is a is a uh, consumer of Fox News, but he doesn't watch Tucker anymore because he, he, I don't know. I don't think he could figure out. Or, or it's, it's just not worth the effort for him to figure that out because there's enough... 
you know, there's enough other people on there that are going to tell you about the heckin' terrorizers and the heckin' minorities and the heckin' <laughs> transgenders and the heckin' <laughs> all, the, all the various Fox News boogeymen, you know, you can watch. Uh, and they also have, like, um, I don't know, like, entertainment shows on there, too. Like, they've got uh, Greg Gutfeld. I think it's, like, Late Nights with Greg Gutfeld. But usually that's, that's usually when he goes to bed, right? Greg Gutfeld comes on, it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes i saw I, i've seen bar. ads for like they're producing full-on documentary series like, i think it was um oh shoot who the heck is that guy oh yeah they're making conservative documentaries now ah uh, fuck is that dude from parks and rec the fucking the libertarian no not ron no he's he's secretly paused which saddens me but oh. um oh dude is it Rob Lowe? Uh, where is it? Is it, is it Rob? It is Rob Lowe. Yeah, okay. so Rob Lowe apparently is making one. I saw like an ad for it the other day and I was like, oh, I didn't know he was one of those people. Um, yeah, they make like documentaries now, which is kind of cool. I'm, I, I'm a documentary song. person. Kelsey Grammer's Historic Battles for America. Kelsey Grammer. Uh, Untold Patriots uh, Revealed with Pete Heg Hegseth. I'm not that great at reading. Cursive, because, you know, American education system. <laughs> the Attempted Assassination of Ronald Reagan. Battle of Mogadishu. Italian. Brad Meltzer's Secrets of Abraham Lincoln. What Made America Great. Yeah, it's him right there. Is that Rob Lowe? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. I, I don't I'll, know. No, it is. Somebody's. I don't think that's him. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I am not. I, whenever I'm on the other show, they talk about celebrities. I, I have no fucking clue what people are talking about. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't like two. I know what Chris Pratt looks like, and I know what, uh, fucking Dwayne the Rock Johnson looks like, and that's it. Yeah, I don't think I know what Chris Pratt looks like. I probably would know if I Googled him. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I don't know what anything is. <laughs> I've I've become a 30 year old boomer and I'm not even 30 yet. <laughs> I don't know any of this modern stuff. Russian war machine three days in Moscow. Okay. Well, maybe this will be something to watch if it's good to listen to. See, that's that's my deal is I need stuff to listen to because I work with my hands and I need my eyes to see where I'm hammering something or where I'm, I'm putting something in because I actually I actually injured myself. Oh, damn. Some shit. Got like, a, well, I don't think I'm sharing my camera. It's, it's a really minor version of an injury that I got uh, over the summer, but I've got like this little bruise on my finger. From accidentally. Oh, damn. So. I need a you an audiobook person? You can do audiobooks. I do do some audiobooks. Nice. I was, um, I've listened to it like a few times through, which I feel is something you've got to do with Nietzsche, but, um, listening to, uh, Thus Spake Zarathustra once again, yeah, uh, what is it? The philosophy of the Ubermensch. Uh, so I'm doing that one again. He's and, being uh, problematic. I see. No, the the Ubermensch is very based. It's just the the Nazis, you know. They they kind of twisted the idea a bit because it has it has nothing to do with race. Like nothing about the Ubermensch is, is racial. I know, but you have to understand because the heckin' Nazis used it, that makes it bad. You know, I don't I don't believe in in. Here's the thing, right? Okay. If you really, really want to stick it to the Nazis, you shouldn't allow them to steal insignias and, and like, like, okay, the swastika, for example. The swastika is a really cool symbol, okay? Like, if you just remove all the, you know, bad, bad stuff, you know, like, uh, okay, let's, let's do this. <clears throat> you gonna do this on Google? Well, we're going to get the safe one. The safe one, okay. I'm going to get the safer. Hindu swastika. So. Because 
The reason they stole this, I think, is because the Nazis were like the Aryan people, and the Aryans were like uh, supposedly the people that like settled India or something like that. But like, it's just it's it's a cool symbol, okay? It's like it's it's kind of like that, um, you know, that like little infinity S that everybody drew yeah. when they were in school. It's like that. It's the same as that. So if someone if someone does a heckin' genocide <laughs> and they have infinity S arm patches. Does that become a problem? Like this, this is something a child would naturally draw. Like it's just a like angular S with another, you know, kind of crooked S in it. But it's like you you allowed them to take this from you, right? See what I what I've what I what I learned was that the the Hindu one you can see it here is that the Hindu one's pretty flat. Like it's it's on like a straight you know 90 degree axis the the nazi one is you take it and you like flip it 45 degrees then it doesn't have like any of the the flailing at the ends and stuff <laughs> yeah so this guy gets it but he I also has the goatee too so it kind of nullifies it but i see yeah michael jordan understands what i'm talking about okay you should not uh, excuse me that's actually charlie chaplin's mustache not hitler's mustache I just I just typed in uh, who's this Hitler guy? I, I put in Michael Jordan mustache. It's Charlie Chaplin's mustache. Yeah, Kenny. exactly. Charlie Chaplin. Like, why would you allow a fucking vegetarian tweaker to steal this from you? Bunch of fucking losers. You're like, no, we can't do it because that the heckin' six million, right? Meanwhile. Meanwhile, go to a college campus and find some, um, uh, what are those? It's not all the Chinese kids, but it's like the ones that try to push the China agenda or whatever. I forget what they're called. There's, there's like a certain word for them. Um, Exchange students? No, it's, it's like, there's, okay, there's like a thing where it's like, I don't know, China culture or something like that there's there's like a whole thing where you can like learn about like modern chinese culture and a lot of it's run by you know like chinese students and stuff like that and uh you know you ask them about mao and they'll be like oh yeah he was a great guy it's like okay so we're just gonna let that one fly under the radar and same thing with stalin who you know objectively even if you take the um hang on a second even if you take the 100% accurate uh, statistics from historians uh, with the Holocaust, I think 10 million, um, completely accurate. We're not going to talk about thermodynamics or crematoriums or anything like that because it's all fake news. OK, the Nazis had more effective crematoriums than anybody else in history. And then that technology was lost along with the Nazi spaceships and stuff. Um, no, they, they exist in Antarctica. They're hidden Dude. in Antarctica. Right, in Antarctica, under the hollow earth. Yes. Um, it was a tragedy, okay, regardless of the number of people that were killed. But, you know, when you take people who did an order of magnitude more death and destruction, I don't know, what's the excuse? I think it's because it was their own people. If you kill your own people, it's all right. But when you kill the chosen people, we have to completely cancel you. So, yeah, we're... Um, we're not allowed to do this, but I, I want to start changing this. I think I'm going to start by getting, um, I'm going to start in a small way because I need to decorate my apartment. So, uh, let's find a good one. Here's a good one. All right. If, uh, I don't need an original because it's going to be too expensive. This looks like a nice, a nice little portrait to hang in your, uh, in your foyer. Nothing wrong with this. Nope. And just because a fucking uh, angry vegetarian tweaker that couldn't get into art school made it does not mean that this should be something that's banned that you're not allowed to have uh, anywhere ever. I think by banning all this stuff and making it very taboo, 
you're essentially preserving the value that it had when it was bad. Well, and, yeah, exactly. And then that is causing a lot of problems. Like, at least with, you know, in, the, in America, people talk about the Confederacy. The reason it isn't as bad as, as, the, as the Nazis is because you still have Confederate statues down south, right? You still have people who Do we? Um, identify with Southern culture. And, it, and because of that, because it was allowed to evolve with the time, it isn't as bad as it was. Like, people still identify with the South, but it's not, you know, because I hate Black people. It's because I live in the South, right? But because you've taken this, like, whole Nazi culture and just kind of tarballed it uh -huh. and stuck it in a closet, anyone who views it is only going to be able to view it in that context because that's where you stuck it. Instead of, like, letting it die and then letting whatever symbols and culture it adapted evolve past that point it, it's just stuck there and people are just going to continue to see it that way and you're just going to have this cycle that perpetuates because no one wants to let it evolve past what it was so by making it verboten you're essentially just letting it continue to exist as it was and uh we do that because it, it was it was something that was bad against the chosen people. Yeah, and you can't do that. You should never do something bad towards the chosen people. Okay, let's no. just let's, let's just quick summary to anybody watching the Libre podcast. <clears throat> Hamas was wrong. Hitler was wrong. Hadrian was wrong. Okay. In fact, we should just ban the letter H at this point. I don't know how you're going to spell my name. It's going to be Kenneth. We need to ban the letter H. People whose names begin with H are bad people. Okay. Uh, who else? King Harold. King Harold tried to kill Jesus, who, you know, um, Jews don't believe that he was the Messiah, but that's, that's all other can of worms. But yeah, man, people whose names start with H, you got to watch them. Got to keep an eye on those people. All right. So circling back to uh, the... Um, <laughs> the piracy topic. This was an anti-piracy PSA that was... Um, it was published recently, and it was really hard to find. I was only able to find this unlisted video on YouTube. Um, so I'm not sure if this is the original or not, but this is just... This is just hilarious, so... <laughs> anti-piracy PSA. Oh, actually... Let's see, there's Creative Commons. So I'm allowed to use this, okay? Creative Commons, attribution license, reuse allowed. Let's go. Here you go, babe. Thank you. Check this out. I didn't even know this was out yet. It's not, but I have my ways. Are you sure that's safe? <laughs> I have a VPN. Got We're a VPN, good. babe. Okay. You do this everything is the only you thing can VPNs to secure are your for, home. By the way. But when you pirate content, you're inviting in dangers you can't even see, like exposing your devices to malware, putting your personal information at risk, or surrendering your privacy. I hate um, when that happens. It's even funding crime syndicates at the expense of innocent people. Stream safely to protect your identity, protect your devices, and stop the flow of resources to organized crime. That's oh. right. Make the flow of resources go to Hollywood so that they can do a, a heckin' Weinstein. You watch movies and shows from legitimate sources, because pirated content is never really free. Visit StreamSafely.com to learn more. You know, hmm. let's do that. Let's, let's visit StreamSafely.com to learn more. So, here's the thing. Is, uh... They're not entirely wrong because I have a VPN, babe. Yeah, what VPN? Do you have like Supreme VPN run by a company based in Zhuangming? Because <laughs> that could that 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 could definitely happen. Yeah, and yeah, it's maybe. not because you used the pirate site. It's because of the VPN you chose. Well, here's the here's the part where I think there is some legitimacy. So. 
if you visit a pirated streaming site without an ad blocker, you are going to get all kinds of nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> popping up like, oh my god, hot Asian singles in your area. We don't have Asians, okay? We can't afford them. <laughs> We've got blacks, whites, and Mexicans here in Southern Virginia. Oh, the Asians are not here yet. There's like one Chinese restaurant, and that's it. So yeah, you get you do get some real fucked up, you know, obvious malware ads are obvious. But, you know, unfortunately, di digital literacy is is lacking because we hold these people's hands and, you know, we, we put them in feedlots run by Apple and Microsoft where people are not able to learn how devices or how anything digital actually works. Yeah, like I, like people who think because I visit, you know, pirated sites to watch streams, which I only do in Minecraft, by the way. Um, you get a virus. It's like, no, you don't. There, there is a, a series of bad and ill-informed decisions that need to happen from that site in order to forget the virus. But I think, like, like we've always been told, common sense is, is, is the best protection against, anti, against malware. Common yeah. sense is the best protection. I don't even think we should because, call it common sense, though, because how, how common is that sense? <laughs> uh, very rare, actually. I like calling it digital Fairly. literacy. Because you worked at Geek Squad, you know how rare that shit oh, yeah. was sometimes. Oh, yeah. I got a heckin' virus <laughs> on my computer. It's like, uh, sir, this is a pop-up on a porn site. You, you don't have a virus yet. I <laughs> have about I have, to. I actually have unreleased uh, footage of a drive that I found. I, I think I told this in the last podcast, but I have unreleased footage of a drive that I found in a laptop. Uh, and the lady who had it... Um, she downloaded all of her Facebook photos, right? And this is like photos from Messenger and from her actual timeline. And you can do that on Facebook. I did it before when I left Facebook like 10 years ago. Um, she also backed up her iPhone to the computer. And the problem was the drive wasn't encrypted. And, you know, as I do, I, I checked the drive to make sure she isn't housing any CSAM. Uh, she was housing images of herself uh uh-huh you know working at chucks you're working at chucks yeah, yeah. formerly sneeds from yeah so subsequently sneeds oh yeah now it's sneeds formerly yeah. chucks right well it's actually it's uh, actually floyd's now it's, it's floyd's now yeah you didn't know about that oh is that actually. canon it that is canon i got you um, okay uh but yeah there's like that shit on them nudes of her and i was like damn this is kind of wild but I trashed the drive because I'm not a degenerate. So. Look at this. These guys are getting free advertising. So yeah, this is Floyd's Feed and Seed. Floyd's Feed and Seed in downtown Dayville has it all for that Christmas shopping list. Floyd's Feed and Seed has late Martin's best selection of Carhartt apparel. I and this year we've expanded to offer you the best that, like selection and price drive? on all. Uh, probably something like that. Yeah, how to go down? You should there go down there for a video. That'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> I don't know. My my cousin has me a little bit paranoid about going to Alabama because apparently the police there are on some fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know. I don't know if 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 they're gonna pull me over. They're like, well, you're brown <laughs> and you're bearded. That's two strikes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pull out that uh that like little sheet from that family guy joke oh yeah, he yeah. pulls out the fucking card yeah not, not safe. okay not safe not okay go directly to jail all carhartt product need boots floyd has a huge selection of casual to work boots and they're in all sizes from quality name brands that you trust See all our Western wear and apparel, as well as a full line of saddles and tack. Looking for a unique gift? Floyd's has it all from wind chimes to knickknacks, and as always, the feed you need for the holidays. Floyd's Feed and Seed on Broadnack Street in Dayton. I love videos like this because it's got 67,000 views, and, you know, it's, it's on a channel that's only got 400-something subscribers. I wonder if this is, like, actually... What, what even is this? Yeah, so this is just like, I don't know, talking about local businesses. Some dude uploading shit, yeah. Yeah, and then <laughs> a couple of 
couple of kiddos from anonymous basket weaving forums are just all up in these comments. <sighs> I heard the owner is almost three years drug free. I'm proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, speaking of um, speaking of drugs, I got some other PSAs that we're gonna watch. <clears throat> this is a anti marijuana ad, two thousand and two. Did you exist in two thousand two? I forget how old I you did. Are. I'm not. I'm not that much of a zoomer. <laughs> I always forget. Hey, if your parents get divorced, who gets the fish? <laughs> 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 Dude, your sister's hot. That's not cool. <clears throat> hey, man. Check this out. Cool. Is it loaded? Nah. God, I hate when that happens. Oof. I Wait, hate when I... From... Say what? Correct me if I'm wrong, but the way he was holding the bong... Do you want to hold because that because that's like essentially like boiling water. Wouldn't that be like super fucking hot? Mm, well, it looks like he's holding right below the bowl. Oh, maybe not necessarily. I don't know. I mean, it it, it depends because it depends on how thick the bowl is. It also depends that's on true. you know what you're doing. If you're doing like uh, dabs and shit with like a blowtorch, then. You know, yeah, that would be a bit of a problem. But uh, I think someone in the comments mentioned that, yeah, this is a, makes a better anti-gun PSA than it does an anti-drug PSA. Yeah, man, I hate when that happens and I forget all of the rules of gun safety simultaneously. <laughs> you, take, you take one huff of weed and all of your gun training just immediately leaves your brain. Just immediately leaves. Yeah. Now this one I actually do think is um well actually wait no that's a parody. Okay, this is just a parody of what I actually think is uh oh actually it's right here. I feel like this was some of the best uh anti-weed commercials. But this is just a parody. It's kind of funny too. Did you ever actually see these commercials growing up? I didn't. Okay, because they came on and like, I mean, I was I was too young to be the target audience. I feel like I was seeing these like in between Ed, Ed and Eddie shows when I was like maybe eight. Um, yeah, this is like the original one. 16 years ago, this is uploaded. Jeez. Well, this is pre-YouTube anyway, I'm pretty sure. Oh shit. Well, it's it's literally just the beginning of the family guy thing. And then yeah, the dog goes and, and plants a little thing. I mean that's that's literally the only the only um That's like one of the only legit anti-weed PSAs I think I've seen. Cause like that's cause that's like the main issue in my opinion, with weed, is it's not, like, so much physically addictive, but it's definitely psychologically addictive. Like, people will do that all the time. But also, I think drug addiction in general is a lot more complicated than just simply, you know, doing a drug. Like, I find it really hard to believe that because it always seems like addiction happens when people are in bad environments. Like when right. I was living in Massachusetts, I, I think it's safe to say I smoked way too much weed. I mean, I was high constantly at Geek Squad. <laughs> and uh, 
But it's like, it's because, you know, I hate my job, I hate my environment, I hate my life. And now that I'm, you know, on a farm, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say that I don't, I don't ever burn the devil's lettuce, but I definitely don't do it every fucking day. I certainly don't do it all day, every day. You know, like, it's, it's something where, you know, I don't need it to sleep, I don't need it to eat, it's just something to do occasionally for enjoyment. Same thing with drinking, right? I don't drink every day. Um, I don't think I ever, well, I did, I did go through a little bit of alcoholism after Stelio. I kind of got away. And, um, yeah, it's, it's so much more, you know, I really wish that when it came to substance abuse, instead of focusing so much on the substance itself, people would focus on the environment and the, the kind of state of mind that people get into that leads them to get into addictions because i feel like that's how all addictions yeah work. because with, with an addiction you have people it's not because someone like fucking smoked the the marijuana once right people yeah. do that shit all the time in college and they don't become addicts but exactly there's usually a situation that they're in and one of the coping mechanisms is drug so there's a feedback loop there where because they're in the situation, they have to use the substance. So what they're, what they're trying to push in these PSAs is like, oh, just don't do the substance without actually addressing the root problem. So what a lot of PSAs do anyway in politics in general is they tend to address the side effect because it tends to be easier to just deal with the side effect than actually dealing with the root problem. So... That is what I think a lot of the stigma comes from, is that not all the time people who smoke weed all the time have problems, but generally, like you said, it tends to be because they're in a situation that they need to cope with. Yeah. And I think helping them with the situation, like in your case, tends to show remove that self, you don't need it remove self from massachusetts yeah remove self from where it's it, like dude damn people calling the fucking cops on me for shooting my bow was like a perfect <laughs> example of that right no don't go outside and do archery sit in your fucking house and smoke pot and fucking drink and play video games like a good boy you fuck but this, this is another example of that shit where it's it's just a non-solution, like all this anti-homeless shit that they're putting up. Are you seeing more of this around Boston? It's becoming more. Honestly, more I have I haven't been I haven't been to Boston in ages. A lot of it was up. put in during COVID. Yeah. Like shit to keep people and, and it's like, you know, it really sucks because it's like this is a bench, you know, and this is just the most uncomfortable bench. Like literally the benches in prisons are probably more comfortable than this thing is. And it's like, it's just to, you know, it doesn't solve homelessness. It's just, let's take the homeless and put them over here, right? And, mo and more likely what's going to happen, instead of the homeless being in a city in like a, you know, more uh, like densely urbanized environment where people are kind of used to being around them and maybe know how to deal with them, you're going to end up with them in the suburbs where people don't necessarily know how to deal with the homeless in terms of, because because obviously not all homeless are like this, but a lot of them have mental health issues. And so there's a little bit of caution that needs to be enacted. Dealing with homeless and, you know, some housewives or, or little children might necessarily know how to deal. With them. All right, so we get a lot of them end up in the ER sometimes, too. Like I have a friend who works in ER. Um in an urban hospital and i think she said like half to a quarter of her patients at night are just homeless people who come in because it's a it's not it's a state hospital so they can't refuse people so they just come in and they just stay overnight they say like i don't know they're drunk or something and they just get a warm bed and a meal and then they get let off in the morning so a lot of them just end up staying at a hospital overnight i guess that's one way to do it yeah. Still doesn't really solve the problem because somebody's paying that bill. 
we're paying that bill. Yeah. We all we all pay all our taxes. Bro, when I when I when I saw that fucking TurboTax negative number after I did my taxes for the first time after getting the the Glowy job, I was like, this. I want to I want to start a, a riot. Well, one thing uh, you could do if you're responsible <laughs> and you always want to pay your taxes is to uh, shop on base.wim to uh, get yourself some nice merch. Save automatic at checkout a in Monero XMR. You save 10%. Look, we make it so easy for you, right? So I don't default to a credit card. I default to cryptocurrency. I default to Monero XMR as the default cryptocurrency. And um, you can automatically save 10% off of, you know, by using the Monero that you, of course, paid your taxes for. And I'm going to do the same because we're good boys. Always pay our taxes. Uh, so one more, um, one more PSA. Have you ever actually seen Reefer Madness? That old school movie? No. <laughs> it's such a great movie. It's a, you know, I used funny to do enough, Dare in school. That's what, I was, I was, that's what I was with. Well, that's what I, you know, went through too. I mean, this was made in 1936. This was, you know, pre, this is even older than the boomers. But uh, this movie is just, it's hilarious. It's, it's unironically, like at this point, I think considered a stoner movie because the only people I think who are watching this are just stoners that are fucking high off their asses laughing at shit these high school boys and girls are having a hop at the local soda fountain having a hop at the local soda dance. fountain and notice there's no colored it's gentleman here to influence them <laughs> behind closed doors marijuana the burning weed with its roots in hell in this film, you will see the ease with which this vicious plant can be grown in your neighbor's yard. God damn, boy, that's some that's some shitty fucking weed. Holy shit! God damn, bro. No, what the yeah, because they're bro? growing it in a city, dude. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> God, that's that's a that's a crappy looking weed plant. Anywho, can be grown in your neighbor's yard, rolled into harmless looking cigarettes, hidden. Did you catch that? What did, I can't really see because it's like in 12p, but... No, 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 listen, listen. listen okay. so, so you can grow the weed in your neighbor's yard. Grown in your neighbor's yard. Rolled into harmless-looking cigarettes. Harmless-looking cigarettes. Those don't look like cigarettes, man. No, 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 no. It's the fact that he said harm... The, the fact that he's implying that cigarettes are harmless. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because Reefer Madness... Well, oh, this was back in the day when people <laughs> thought cigarettes were harmless. You know, smoking... Nine out of ten doctors recommend Marlboro. Ingesting carcinogens <laughs> into your lungs is definitely harmless. Nine out of ten uh, doctors recommend Marlboro. You can in you can enjoy it by the fireplace. Throw a bit of radium in your fire to get that extra glow. This plant can be grown in your neighbor's yard. Rolled into harmless-looking cigarettes. Hidden in an innocent shoe or watch case. If you want a good smoke, try one of these. You will meet Bill, who once took pride in his strong will as he takes the first step toward enslavement. I mean, they look like they're having a good time. I don't know what the problem is here. Smoking the soul-destroying reefer, they find a moment's pleasure but at a terrible price. Debauchery, violence, murder. Don't you hate when you smoke a doobie and you beat the shit out of your girlfriend? <laughs> I hate when that happens. I, I, I also hate when I, when, I, when I take one or two tokes of, of a doobie and then fucking jump out the window. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They, they just think you lose all mental capacity. The ultimate end of the marijuana addict. Insanity. Hopeless insanity. My God. God forbid people have fun. See this film yeah, God now. forbid they play the piano too fast. <laughs> they have a heart attack. It is too late. 
You know what? We need to contact Fox News to make a remake of Reefer Madness. And I want to be the shysty drug dealer that ruins all these pure, innocent white kids with my, oh, no. with my very powerful fucking reefers. <laughs> Well, I, and that, now now the threat is not just weed; it's people who like lace the the weed with other shit that actually is harmful. Well, yeah, I mean, if if you're buying shit on, off the streets, I mean, that's that's the main reason why I think it's so stupid to like criminalize drugs in general, because like I've I've you know. Um, um, Someone who isn't me used to know cocaine dealers in RuneScape, and um, they would cut their cocaine, you know, their product with all kinds of nonsense, because the idea is, does it look like white powder? Cool. Use it to cut it. So fucking, I mean, baking soda, I guess, is like kind of the classic thing. Drywall, fucking baby formula creatine yeah. like all there's that scene shit. from a uh, gta 5 where there's that mission where you go to the original gta uh, san andreas location mm -hmm. and you go pick up the block of cocaine and the fucking he opens it and he's like oh that shit's drywall so they yeah. do that shit. yeah well i mean there will usually be some cocaine in there because if you know people use your product and there isn't an effect then you know they're they're gonna return it like <laughs> <laughs> it's like that uh Amazon returns for cocaine. Yeah, that's that's like that scene in Boondocks where Thugnificent was trying to sell crack and the <laughs> crackhead comes back. So this crack is defective. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it's it's like there's all kinds of nonsense that gets put into it. Like like okay, so this was um it might still be a problem, but uh this was a problem like a few years ago when when fentanyl started becoming popular is people would cut their cocaine with fentanyl because both of them are white powders. Um, I don't know why you would choose an opiate because I feel like that would have the opposite effect of cocaine unless you're going for a speedball type of effect. But anyway, you know, people were dying left and right getting cocaine and doing an amount of cocaine that would normally not kill a person, but you're getting, you know, like an amount of fentanyl that would, you know, even kill St. Floyd, because of course St. Floyd didn't die from fentanyl over this. Um, and, uh, you know, like the, the cartel actually intervened. So cartels um, started dying fentanyl pink. So here's a little PSA for you guys watching the Libre podcast. You don't get this with any other podcast. If your cocaine has a slight pink hue to it, do not snort it because it's fentanyl. Um, yeah, it's just like, you know, if it was an another issue too that you have with drugs being illegal is there's no way for you to verify the potency. So with marijuana, I don't think it's really a problem because... Well, I guess it could be a problem if, you know, you accidentally get too high and you can't do something that, you know, like, oh, no, I was going to do my laundry and then I got high. But um, like with uh, cocaine and heroin and stuff like that, they have pretty crappy LD50s. Like, you know, I think that's what is it? The amount that it takes to kill like 50 percent of a population, more or less. Um, so, yeah, it's really easy to overdose, especially if you don't know. What purity you're getting like okay imagine this imagine you went to the liquor store and none of the bottles had abvs on it right i i know you're not really a, a liquor drinker at all but um there's there's stuff that you can get like i've tried i i actually have a brandy right now a virginia made apple brandy that is a hundred proof and it tastes probably as smooth or smoother than Jameson, which is 80 proof. So it's 20% more powerful than Jameson is, right? So imagine if you're going to the liquor store and you're getting shit that's, you know, plus or minus 20% of, uh, you know, what you were expecting. And so you were going to do a, you know, um, a uh, responsible uh thing and do two shots and, and go for a late night drive <laughs> but really it ends up being four shots of the late night drive 
And now I am become drunk. Driver of trucks. <laughs> <laughs> Runner over of pedestrians. <laughs> okay. We we gotta we gotta talk about some heckin'. Someone actually asked me to talk about this, so we gotta talk about this. The United States. We're doing trains, baby! Yeah! We're gonna get some freaking high-speed rails. We're finally gonna catch up to the rest of the first world and get some trains. The USA will invest in high-speed train to fight climate change, which probably is one of the more legit ways to fight climate change, right? Maglevs? I can't imagine maglevs pollute more than um you know cars on the road even electric vehicles because like one, one of my one of the big beefs that i have with people who think electric vehicles are going to protect the climate is the fact that a you're buying a brand new vehicle instead of a used vehicle most of the time and then b how is the power generated to charge your electric vehicle like i could understand if you've got solar generation or, you know, if you live in a place where you get hydroelectric power, one of the rare places in the United States that actually do nuclear power, because we're so fucking afraid of nuclear power, because we're a bunch of fucking retards that don't understand how uranium works, um, or plutonium, or whatever other things they use to create nuclear power. Because honestly, nuclear power, like, from, from the little bit of research I did into it, it's the safest way to generate power. Safest it's actually the second safest, to... I was going to say that. It's okay. second safest behind solar. But really? I don't know how you die from solar. Do you like cut your finger on a fucking solar panel or something? Well, actually, okay. I don't think safest is what I, I, I think what I meant to say was um, cheapest and causes the least amount of pollution long term. I, I don't know if it's really the cheap. I mean, long, long term, term is the cheapest, but the problem with nuclear is that it has a really, 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 really high startup cost yep. and you don't get ROI for like decades. Yeah, yeah. You like need to, 30 years, I think it takes for it to be profitable. Yeah, you, yeah, like 20 or 30 years. But I mean, some people can do that. Like, like, okay, Elon Musk bought Twitter for like, what, $45 billion? How long do you think that's going to take to get an ROI off of Twitter? There's no way. There's no way he's making that back in like 10 or 20 years. I doubt it. Half a million a year, right, to get back? No, no, no. 40 billion, that's 2 billion. You'd have to make 2 billion per year off of Twitter for 20 years. It's not happening. Yeah. yeah, it's not happening. So why didn't you do nuclear power? That See, that would have actually gone great with the whole Tesla thing, right? Because those are electric right. vehicles. So you're generating electricity with a heckin' Tesla power plant or, um, or even SMRs. But I think like small modular reactors are actually more, way more pollutant than uh, the other ones. That would be the really dope thing to have, man. If I could have an SMR on my farm, that'd be fucking dope. An SMR and Starlink. Well, actually... Power is more reliable on the farm than it is here because there's a generator on the farm. I don't have a generator for my here. I should probably get one because I have lost power a couple times. There's actually one time I drove home from my uh, parents' house and um, these studio lights were on because these are like smart lights that have a remote. So when the power cut off and then back on, they turned on. So I just, you know, pull into my driveway and I see that... Uh, a light lights were on in my house so you know i do what any sane man would do and i pulled out my gun and i started sweeping the house <laughs> to, to see if marauders had entered to see if finally if they had finally come and they were uh trying to trap me they were trying to ambush me and uh but yeah there were no invaders i was safe so some of the projects announced by um, Biden are building a high-speed train line between San Francisco and Los Angeles and California, building a high-speed train line between Miami and Orlando and Florida, um, in Illinois, Chicago, and... Wait, in Illinois, Chicago, and St. Building? This sentence confuses me. In... Chicago, they're building a... Oh, okay, so they're building one between Chicago and St. Louis. High-speed rail. Yeah, high-speed train. Construction of a high-speed train line between New York City and Albany in New York, and building a high-speed train line between Dallas and Houston in Texas. So this, this is definitely something that I, I think is great, because, you know, for... Um, well, it also depends on the quality of the inside of the train itself. That's that's obviously a you know 
big question mark depending on what city you're in. Because uh, if you ride the trains in Massachusetts, especially if you ride the red line, you're going to run into some folks doing that dope fiend lean. You're going to run into some people looking like qu they're <laughs> impersonate a question mark. <laughs> Go. <laughs> that, that assumes that the trains are working. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, because the trains, the MBTA does get a little bit ratchet. This will be new trains, though. Have you ever rode any of the new trains? I rode one. Uh, yeah, I, I have occasionally. Like I said, I don't go in the city as much as I used to anymore, but um, they are quite nice until, you know, the, the homeless people and the drug addicts take them over and ruin them and become the same as the old trains. But um, these trains are nice, though. The Amtrak ones are not that bad. Yeah. I mean, well, these, because you well, these are high-speed rails. So, I mean, it's it's completely different than the... And, you know, I guess this is more like an Amtrak thing where it connects different cities. Because, yeah, I took the Amtrak from... Uh, I took it from Massachusetts to... Uh, I want to say Cincinnati? Where did I... I don't remember. But I, I had to go to another state for... Um, uh, what was the thing? Geek Squad induction. How did you go all the way to Cincinnati for that shit? Cincinnati, Ohio, or... No, 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 no. I think it was Connecticut. Yeah, they had me go to, like... Yeah, it was Connecticut. Connecticut for that shit. Yeah, I had to do that, and I took the Amtrak, and... I mean, it was it was okay, you know, right on the Amtrak. It was pretty chill. They had Wi-Fi. I was playing uh, Binding of Isaac, my computer. Very base game. Yeah, that was a pretty fun game. I just, I, I didn't keep up with it, though. There's been too many, like... I feel like after Rebirth, I don't know how to play that game anymore. I don't know any of the metas, and, like, I don't know what stuff does. Yeah. They only had, um... They had two more updates of that. They had Afterbirth and Repentance, and then they stopped. Yeah. Well, I guess so. that makes sense, because, I mean, it was, like... It, it seems like they were running out of, uh... Like, bosses to fight, because in Rebirth... I think Mega Satan was the new boss they had. They already had Satan. So you killed Satan, you killed Mega Satan. It's like, who else is left? I think there's like the Beast is one of the new ones. Yeah, and, now uh, you fight now you fight the angel and you can fight um Blue Baby and you can which is basically Isaac. Uh I think Blue Baby was well hang on, no, Blue Baby was in older games. They added what was the other one? Hush. I forget which one Hush was. Yeah, they added the Hush, and then there's like, um, I think it's Dogma, right? Dogma is the TV that like transforms into uh, the Dogma where the was, TV. Were the, were the Horsemen, the Horsemen in Rebirth, or were they Afterbirth? That was before Rebirth, I think. I was. Yeah, yeah, that's like yeah, a, that's Isaac like a mini boss. Probably. Yeah. But, you know, the real question with this high-speed rail is how is our stuff going to stack up to the rest of the world, right? Cause I think China has the most high-speed rails. We'll just read what this says. As of 2021, China had more than 155,000 kilometers, or 96,313 uh, miles of railways, the second longest network in the world. Okay. By, oh, so yeah, they have the most high-speed rails. By the end of 2022, China had more than 42,000 kilometers um, of high-speed rails, the longest HSR network in the world. And I'm pretty sure they did this in, like, two decades. Because I think probably might be listed in here. Like, prior to 2006, they didn't really have high-speed rails. Yeah, this goes all the way back to, like, the dynasty. Um... Okay, taken up by the Ministry of Transport or Inspection. I don't know, but like, I, I think it was prior to um, 2006, they didn't really have that many high-speed rails, or they were like 10th in the world, and then they became number one. Yeah, because the... in, a, in a socialized country, it's very easy to divert resources to public projects. True, yeah. You, can just like you have everything state-owned, you can just, you know... Get a bunch of paid or unpaid workers and just throw them out into the fucking mines and make a shit ton of rail. Yeah. It's very simple right. to do. We caught some people Googling freedom. 
and uh, <laughs> now now you build now you build railway. Yeah, I think that's going to be the big issue that we run into here in America because there's so much private land ownership that you got to buy those people out to build yeah. trains or go around them. Yeah, too. The the biggest problem though is that the government tries to run like Amtrak as a business to make it profitable. And like, generally that's a good idea. But if you're running a public service, like I, this is the same issue with the T is they try to run the T like a business and make it profitable. It's like motherfucker. It's a public service. It is not meant to be profitable. It's meant to provide a service to the public. Your revenue comes from taxes. Right. So that's a problem. And Generally, like, you know, people like Alan Fisher on YouTube, their easiest solution is just do everything in house, right? Just hire people directly and do everything in house. And like, that's a generally good idea. But you underestimate the expediency of politicians. The reason that they usually hire contractors and the reason government contractors exist is because the government doesn't want to take, you know, like five to eight years to actually develop a workforce that is skilled in making these rails and maintaining the trains because that's way too long, right? The, the election cycle is way too long for that shit, right? They, they don't care. What they want is they want to lay down track as quickly as possible so they can show off to their constituency that they've actually done something. The easiest way to do that is to get a contractor who already has the skill, the labor, and the materials needed to do that. The problem is that those contractors are fucking expensive and they typically overrun the cost because the government underestimates how much the contractors cost. Oh yeah. So well, there, and there's, you know, I remember hearing about that stuff in like DOD and shit. Like if you buy a fucking hammer for the DOD, you pay $500 <laughs> for it. Oh yeah, man. That shit is expensive. I, I, I'm trying not to commit treason here, but like I do the fucking, I used to do some budgeting back when I was like the only IT guy at my at like a financial firm. And my budgets were like typically, you know, like tens of thousands at most. Uh budgets here easily like a thousand times. Like Jeez. we're talking tens of millions of dollars. It's yeah. fucking ridiculous how much money they spend. But you know, that's the thing, like America like, because it's tax money, right? Like, public money yep. is, is tax money. And we spend so much tax money being the police of the world. Like, spending it in, in Ukraine, spending it in Israel, spending it... And, and not even, like, now in Israel. Like, for years now, we've been given billions of dollars to Israel. You know, we give billions of dollars to so many different countries just to be police of the world or just to like maintain i guess our our um what is it our our strategic bases and stuff where we can basically take on the entire world in a military conflict all at once and still win it's like man it'd be pretty cool if we could just for a little while for a few years make a deal with china make a deal with russia Make a deal with, you know, all of our enemies or whatever. Be like, hey guys, so we feel pretty bad about the fact that our internet is like the 20th fastest in the world and our railways suck. Just give us a few years to catch up to South Korea. Let's make high-speed internet, high-speed rails, put high-speed internet on the high-speed rails. And then we're going to go back to being the police of the world. But if we do that... China's going to annex fucking Japan and they're going to annex Taiwan and they're going to annex Australia. <laughs> there's, there's no way. I, I, I think China's too pussy to annex Taiwan. Because yeah, you know we for exist. Because we Cause exist. You, That's you the know only for reason. a fact that, that Taiwan has bombs underneath TSMC if China invades. You but know for a fact. But whose they bombs are they? Who well, has they're to press bombs the they bought from America. Right, and so does it need... Because I feel like America doesn't just give you bombs. I feel like America's like, okay, here's a bomb, but someone here in a bunker somewhere has to press a button to arm it. 
Otherwise, it's just a metal tube. You know? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how any of that stuff works. But I hope we get some heckin' high-speed trains. I was doing a little bit of research on this to try to, you know, talk about it since people were interested. Oh, it won't show me the information now. Oh, really? It sucks, Statista. Oh, did, did you did you go there too much? Because I was looking at the same page yesterday, and I was able to get the stat. But I uh, wonder if it's because you went there too much. I wonder if you can pull it. Let's see if you can pull it and share your screen. Uh, all right, let me try. I was surprised some of the countries on here. It's like like Italy has better trains than us. Doesn't California by itself have a bigger economy than Italy? Like well, does. yeah, because you, you pull that because because uh, um, your because like European countries aren't as the problem with America and part of it is lobbying by oil companies because like they're fucking huge in uh, in America is that America is a very car centric country like, you know, I know because we both have cars. Uh -huh. Everything here is designed and has been designed for the past 60 years to be car centric. Like countries in Europe, they are are both like the countrysides are typically like you know they they've they've been populated for centuries, right? They've so also like been bombed of, to shit as recently. They, as the yeah, 40s. that too. They've also been bombed <laughs> to shit twice. In so some cases, three they, times. They the rebuilt Balkans. everything in the forties. <laughs> yeah, in some cases, multiple times. If you're in the Balkans, but um, <laughs> like so, their their investment into rail was essentially. Because a lot of European cities are very congested because they've been they were designed as walkable because back in the day you had two methods of getting places. You had a horse or your feet. And it generally makes it really easy because you just make a high speed rail between, you know, uh, Rome and Florence. Like where are you going to need to go in between Rome and Florence? Maybe a couple of different stops, but generally only people who live in those areas because everybody tends to live around an urban area right um like in iceland for example i mean i know it's a frozen rock in the middle of the fucking atlantic but like 85 percent of the people in the country live in reykjavik mm. and reykjavik is probably the size i would say of like portland maine okay. or like maybe cambridge massachusetts okay yeah, in terms of like how big the actual city is. Right. Um, so in America, it's like from our founding history, like people would move out to the countryside and they would live on homesteads away from the city. And the only way to get there were via horse and buggy and eventually a car. And because that's how people have lived in America, things are so spread out that this is my problem with high speed rail people investing into it is their scope is very limited and it's only useful for places like California where you have like a, a string of metro areas that are highly populated. Like you have San Francisco, San Diego, Los Angeles, uh, Oakland, uh, which essentially San Francisco, um, right. All up that West coast. And that's fine because you can, tr people usually travel between those all the time, right? People travel between San Francisco and Los Angeles all the time for business. Same on the East coast where you have like, what is it boss wash where it's like boston new york city washington baltimore yeah, right that whole eastern seaboard like that. that works but for the rest of the country like fucking madison wisconsin middle america like how are you gonna get there by a train you really can't yeah it's not gonna happen it's gonna be it's gonna be pickup trucks yeah pickup yeah trucks and well not necessarily all pickup trucks but it, it would reduce the traffic between those metro areas which i think does have benefit Oh, yeah, because, I mean, like, out well, here in southern Virginia, it's like, there generally is not that much traffic. Like, there's usually not, you know, gridlock traffic or, like, you, usually the only time there will ever be some traffic is if there's a log truck that's driving through town. Because, you know, they're really, really big and they tend to go a little bit slower. <clears throat> also, he isn't using Cirex. Not going to make it. Never. All right, I have I have the page up. Sweet. Okay. Share a screen. I think it'll still use camera. Hopefully it does. I have to stop. 
screen. I think you have to stop sharing sharing your screen, I think. Let's see what we got. I just want to look over that because like Italy I think has the fourth or fifth and as far as GDP goes, so California's GDP for 2022 is 3.59 trillion. Italy's is 2.1 trillion. So it's almost double the GDP of Italy. And <clears throat> we know how, uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe Italians are better at building uh, trains than they are cars. They are uh, generally good at building things that go fast. But uh, <laughs> good. <laughs> ask them to build anything else. Not going to work. <laughs> I build the Ferrari and I build the pizza. It's like, yeah, the, the tankettes go fast, but they get fucking murked by one shell from a tiger. <laughs> yeah, you want a you want a good tank. You want that German shit. Do a Panzer, baby. All right, so these. Uh, can you see my page? Stream. And slightly, it's, it's fine. So it looks like um, fastest is China. Second fastest is France. Third is Japan. What's number four? It's Morocco. Why Morocco? <laughs> yeah, that was my question too. I, Morocco just gets its stuff from Europe, I think. But that's kind of weird because isn't like half of Morocco. In open Probably rebellion, Spain, right? I, yeah, I don't. They're close know. to Spain. I don't. Like know half of Morocco is like politics. I'm doesn't only exist. Vaguely aware other countries even exist. It's me. I'm not even going to be aware of other states pretty soon. It's going to be me and my chickens. <laughs> Living. What's on a Virginia? I've never heard of this Virginia before. I only know my farm. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So Morocco, and that's Spain below Morocco, right? They probably got the rail from Spain. They probably got the rail from Spain and took the safeties off of it. <laughs> <laughs> Made it go faster. Korea? Wow, I'm surprised Korea is so far. And I'm actually surprised Germany's far behind. Germany is pretty car centric too. Because oh, okay. of the Autobahn. Yeah, yeah, I guess you got a point there. See, another, another terrible thing that H word did. H word built the autobahn, or you know, he had the dream for it, and now everyone's driving their fancy German cars on the on the uh, Deutsch on the on the Deutsch roads instead of switch instead of uh, getting in the trains responsibly. But he also, you know, he also did terrible things with the train. So I guess that's why Germans aren't allowed to build trains anymore. Okay, we got, um, let's see, let's talk about Epic Games lawsuit against, uh, isn't that what you, what you texted me about earlier? Was it about I messaged you about E3 dying officially. Okay, let's, let's do you, that. You know what I'll E3 let you, is, I'll, right? I'll let you lead that topic. Um, you, you've, you've probably seen E3 before, right? Because that's been around for a while. Um... Um, oh, okay, yes, yes, got it. Okay, the video game thing. E3 Expo. So it's shut down. Yeah, you, you don't know what E3 is? It's a video game expo, right? Yeah, it was, it was like the, like, it was a video game and electronics expo, so it's where you got, like, not just video games, but, like, consoles and, like, Right. You, know, you get like computer graphics cards and new processors and shit that would all like you'd have a bunch of vendors there. Um, yeah, I think I saw I think I saw like uh, maybe a video from Linus or Debauer that were there. Yeah, it, it used to be pretty big. Like they used to have giant conventions uh, in Europe and um, it's now officially dead. Officially dead. Like they, what they happened? Really, uh, so it was kind of weird because like I think their previous record high was in 2009 or 10, like 700,000 
total attendees over the oh, not 700 70 000 total attendees um and then since then they've been slowly declining mainly because developers um mainly sony pulled out uh i think in 20 let me pull up the page here so i can back check myself i'll do this yesterday but um sony pulled out a little while uh let me look at the thing here. When did Sony pull out of this? Uh, God. So I hate about using C-Rex as I'm on a, a Belgian C-Rex server, so I always get Belgian Wikipedia results. All right. Yeah, so Sony uh, opted out in 2019 because Around 2019, they started doing this thing where they would have their own showcase, right? They would just have like a fucking live stream and some random dude showing you stuff that Sony was going to do. And ever since then, like every company has started to kind of do that. And that was right before the pandemic. And oh, okay. when the pandemic happened, every company started doing their own showcase. And then in 2021, they, they did it online and it was a fucking shit show. Uh, you like, said E3 did it online. Yeah, and uh, and and it was a it was a shit show. Damn. Yeah, like uh, just nobody uh, nobody liked it because because the whole point of like E3 before was that it was like an in person convention you could go to and like look at shit. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's pretty shit. And then like. Everybody pulled out. They couldn't get any more people to like developers to come there, and uh, they just died. Which sucks because it used to be a pretty big thing. Like it used to be like that's where you had the like the debut of like the 360 and the PlayStation 3 and the Wii, and like that's where all of those got debuted originally. Um, but now it's dead. And I don't really care. I'm not a huge, I'm not like a huge video game person. I just kind of have to, I sometimes follow it because the other show I'm on talks about it a lot. So I tend to try to keep up. But I thought you would have known E3 because it started off in the 90s. And I thought at least you would have probably seen it once or twice. Oh, that's, that's what I'm saying. I think I watched either Der Bauer or Linus Sebastian at E3, like, once or twice. Because I, I used to watch some of their videos a lot more. Well, actually, I don't remember if Der Bauer was active then. But I definitely watched Linus Tech Tip, like, when I was in high school. You know, I was way more into computer hardware and stuff like that. I mean, I, I still kind of am, but at this point, it's just like, look up the specs, look up reviews of the thing when it comes out for you know, my specific purposes, which isn't even gaming anymore. Like, I really don't play any video games <laughs> anymore. So it's just, like, stuff that's more efficient for um, video editing and, and content production and stuff, since that's, you know, what I'm doing. That's my business, especially now that I have the farm. I'm trying to take advantage of FarmTube, you know, make money as I'm making money by so. filming my day-to-day uh, -day. Cause like that's that's like you know I I really got red pilled about that watching um, there's the homesteaders but then there's other people like Al Blades the guy that cuts grass you've probably seen some of his videos oh yeah it's neither dude who like cuts grass for people just randomly for free yeah yeah so he'll yeah. he'll cut like you know usually it's abandoned houses but sometimes he'll actually do like a lawn restoration. For somebody who, um, you know, who's not able to do it themselves or they're, you know, just lazy or they don't have lawnmowers or whatever. And he films himself doing it. But I can tell you, like, I mean, I don't know exactly what his, um, what his, uh, uh, what is it called? RPM, his revenue per mile is. But, I mean, I can tell you if it's similar to mine... He's making bank off of some of these videos. Like, you know, this one here, half a million views, um, half an hour long. You know, he probably made easily a 
thousand dollars, you know, maybe fifteen hundred or more off of this. Um, these guys like some really good ones too. Popular, you know, eighteen million views, and it's an hour long. He probably, I I don't want to speculate too much about how much he makes. Because again, I don't have access to his RPM, but just you know, if you do the math, if you assume that he makes two dollars for every one thousand views. You know, that's about what my RPM is. Um, but I also make shorter form content, and the longer your content is, the more you typically make, assuming people actually watch it, because there's more ads that can be ran. So it's like, if you just do that 18 million times, that's 36 grand. Like, yeah, that's for, good. for a one hour video. And on top of that, this guy, pretty sure has a real landscaping business i don't think he's really advertising it too much here um but there's there's a lot of people who do this like the girl with the dogs girl with the dogs Easily. she does a lot of free grooming for animals and it's like look at that she made this seven hours ago One hundred seventeen thousand views so she probably made a couple hundred bucks off i mean it's a five minute video it's short so maybe not but I also suspect that animal videos might have higher RPM because A, the kinds of people who are watching them probably aren't using ad blockers and shit like that. And B, True. the kinds of ads that are going to be run on these videos for like pet stuff. I feel like there's more, you know, people that are actually going to click on those ads and buy stuff. Um, so, yeah, here she's advertising her store. Um, and I'm pretty sure she actually runs a legitimate grooming business as well um you know she does these for free but she's able to make money through youtube off of it um another one that i like i think this guy's more of an underdog a million plus subscribers is victory outdoor services yeah i actually have more subs than this guy but he's he's pretty dope so this dude does um and he actually gets a lot of views on his stuff too which is good you know even though he's he's just got 400k subscribers, you know, pretty much everyone is actually watching his videos. Um, but yeah, he runs like a concrete. He does concrete. He does um, m most of what I see him doing is concrete, where he'll pour concrete for like a patio or things like that. And it's like there's so many people who have businesses like this, but you just put GoPros on these people. And, you know, you're shooting the shit, you're having fun. Because, like, this is literally during COVID when I was doing work from home and stuff, I would have, like, you know, a, a spreadsheet or JIRA tickets and stuff like that open on one monitor. And then I would have homesteaders open on another one. Have, you know, people like this. Because I feel like for a lot of people... Doing work where you're just indoors all day long, sitting at a computer, is just not natural. And so many of us want to be doing some kind of blue-collar work, but there's just not as much money in the blue-collar work. Um, but we want to live vicariously through these people, which you can do with technology. Okay, like you put you know, GoPros on, like with this video that I edited, or I got to edit it together, of me um, showing off the coop and moving it, but I'm hoping that it'll be the same kind of deal. I mean, I had four different camera angles, and I could probably turn into a pretty decent video. But yeah, like this, I, I really think that this is the future for businesses, is to have some kind of a social media presence, and you can kind of double dip on your revenue here and yeah. make money through social media but also you're making money through a real job and honestly that that's the kind of people that i think should be on social media in the first place people who just spend so much time on instagram or whatever or who spend time on youtube trying to get famous and it's like what are you you're getting famous for what what's the point <laughs> you're some moron who's got an opinion and you just want to you know, be famous off of that. Like, it's so much better if you actually have something to sell, some kind of product or service to sell, and then social media 
to uh, market that. But anyway, I think uh, I think that's a podcast. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. This was the Libre Podcast, Episode 5. Great day.